Welcome to the Lego Mugs Podcast. I'm your host, Quincy. And your other host, Justin. So, uh, today I want to start with your concoction. My concoction is a lovely... We're not sponsored, but I'm just going to go ahead and throw it out there on how I'm making it. It is Minute Maid Lemonade, mixed in with a Bigelow tea called I Love Lemon. And it makes lemonade really earthy and really good. Really good aftertaste. Everything is amazing about it. You don't have to add any extra sugar. Uh, the Minute Maid's already got that in it. I love the concept of I added bits of leaves to this and it somehow made it earthy. <laughs> like real talk, real talk. It tastes really good. Now, I tried it. It's not bad. Um, like I was telling you though, I would definitely do some like sun brewed with it. Yeah, I, I we, we need to. I I, I never, never ever sun brewed anything. So we can get a picture. We can set up in my backyard. Mm. Um, I found something really interesting, and if you guys go and check my Twitter page, or not my Twitter page, our, our Twitter, Twitter page, page. <laughs> the show's <laughs> It's mine too, bitch! I mean, you can look at my Twitter page if you want, but the photos ain't there. <laughs> um, I found this thing, actually my girlfriend found this thing at Walmart, um, and it's a pour-over coffee. So basically, it was, it was a dollar, um, and it's by Reborn Coffee, and it's this little package you open up, and it's got this little bag with grounds in it. And it's got these plastic things you pulled out and drape over the edges of the cup so it holds it up, and then you pour the hot water through it. And it's like a single one-off thing of coffee. It's uh, like to meant to travel. Like a, yeah, travel or like just you want to do a quick drip thing. You know, if you don't have a Keurig, all you need is a cup and a way to make hot water. Yeah. So it was good. I liked it. Um, it I put too much cream in it, so that was kind of on me. But it brewed really easily, and it had a good smell. It has a good taste. So I, I'm happy with it. I'll probably do it again, and I'm gonna check out what else the uh, Reborn Company has. Yeah, um, they they just started out on Twitter, so go check them out on Twitter. Um, Reborn Coffee. Yeah, Reborn, Reborn Coffee. I think it's at Reborn. Yeah, I, I searched. I just searched Reborn on Twitter and found it right away. Okay. Yeah. I mean, they they don't have many followers, but go ahead and give them a follow if they happen to have extra things. Uh, I believe we checked out that they're having a subscription. Yeah, service they're working soon. on a subscription service. So that so, looks interesting. Uh, yeah, they, they like get a coffee, golf so. clap from me. I hope that uh, soon. I'm looking at you. Uh, Dollar Tea Club. <laughs> I, I I saw that you had some some more flavors that looked really good, and maybe one of us out of the two here would like to try them. I know that they're not listening, but it doesn't hurt to try. Damn it! Eventually, I will make him try my kind of tea so that he can be all squeamish. I set. don't like clove. You don't have to try the clove one. Oh, the cinnamon either. <laughs> I like harsh teas, apparently. Um, I'm going to give a quick shout out to a fellow podcast that's just starting out. Uh, they're on their episode four right now uh, to the time of this podcast. Uh, they're called the Rusty Rupees. Um, they're Oakland branched, so there is a little bit of harsh language involved. But uh, they, they hit they hit some of the subjects we, we already... I, I love that <laughs> you went Oakland-based, Oakland branch, so there's harsh <laughs> language. They, uh, like, they, they, don't, they don't pull any punches. And right now, all. I feel like people in Oakland are sitting there going, hey, fuck you. Oh, damn, I just proved the fucking point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, they, they're, they're, they hit the subjects that we hit. Um, they talk a little bit more in depth on smaller subjects, like... I think their longest podcast overall is maybe an hour and 10 minutes. Okay. So, I mean, there, there's something to, to listen to, to pass the time, to get other opinions. Um, one of my personal friends is, is a part of them, and, you know, they designated themselves each individual colors. I forgot what the fuck. I forgot which color he is, but uh, glad to give you a shout out. You know, hopefully you guys get pulled up like we will, hopefully. I do have questions about the name. Go for it. Rusty Rupees. I didn't know Rupees could rust. I think that's I think that's the insignia of the joke, okay. and they have entry. They got freaking opening music, bro. Yeah, you gotta we gotta yell at Piper from Hidden Scars because we heard a test of it and we were pretty happy. And Wait, then, we what? I, I didn't have you listened to the test. Post? No. Oh, yeah, he had. No, I sent it to you. I sent it to you months ago. Okay. Well, I'll have to I'll have to find it again and play it for you. But we had a little bit of test stuff, and it wasn't bad. But. I'm about to go yell at him because we don't have our opening music, and we're on episode like 20 now, aren't we? 18, 20? Uh, 18. 18. Okay, so I, I got to go yell at Piper from Hidden Scars. And guys, yell at him, too. Yeah. We, <laughs> he we... doesn't have a Twitter, though, so good luck finding him. On Facebook? Um, the the personal? personal one. Yeah. Yeah, don't 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 harass on personal. Yeah, don't ha harass me on my personal Facebook. I will just block you. <laughs> I, I, I don't care if you harass me. I, I, I may come off very unpersonable, let, but I actually enjoy people talking to me. Let me redo this. Um, I probably actually won't block you because I'm never on my Facebook. That's, yeah, yeah. So. but i'm i'm everywhere at every time i don't mind talking to people it's just I, I don't have time to so don't if i ignore you don't don't take it as weird i'll get back to you in a minute my profile photo is like four years old now oh yeah the the, the fucking <laughs> the one with the the stunner shades yeah 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that one's like four years old now. Uh, They're fucking aviators, by the way. And it's savage. <laughs> might as well stick on the on the task of podcasts. We uh, have you caught up on pretending uh, to be people? Yes. I was so nervous listening to this last episode. <laughs> I was too. I was like, what the fuck's gonna happen? Oh, that ha Oh, new entry song. Oh, new. Oh, wait, wait, Different- a kid. Wait, 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 Bishop. Wait. So I have one thing to say about this, and having both been a DM and having both been playing in a game rather than DMing, I, I feel like he was just gunning for them on this one. I and felt I it too, hate but when that happens. In a I game. felt like it was, but for a good reason because I know I knew that. Um, oh God, the small one, the small uh, cop. Uh, beans. Beans. Okay. I uh, what is his name? Uh, I don't remember. Beans. <laughs> beans. Yeah. Okay. It's my bad. I. I Keith Vigna. Keith Vigna. Um. I knew that he had something up his sleeve. I knew that he was going to spend up his, his sleeve. Uh, <laughs> uh, we're not going to spoil too much, but I knew he had luck. That he was. He was. He was like he, for the last three sessions. He was like, I, "How do I use luck? How do I do this?" So he, I saw that he had it in his mind, considering yeah. both of them had all of them have exhaustion that sort of thing. I'm like, they're going to do something, mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden, the shit that happened happened. And I was like. So, okay, anyone within earshot of this podcast, go check out Pretending to Be People. They yeah. have all interactivities. Um, they they are doing an amazing job with a cult in a modern setting. I uh, Fucking amazing work. The only downside is they, they do it so far in advance because they, they were talking about the Call of Cthulhu game. Not this one, but the, the episode yeah. before. So and I'm like, last week's episode, their episodes October. come out on Monday, so not this week's monday but last, last week's monday's yeah. episode they were talking about call of cthulhu having just dropped and that was october of 2018 a little before october of 2018 yeah. so i was like they banked Whoa. the episodes that's perfectly they, fine it's smart that, that's fine and smart but here we can't do that because we talk about news <laughs> yeah uh but then hearing about it uh now i was like wait that that game is oh I mean, it's not bad. I, I appreciate it, but having them talk about that subject, and then I'm kind of curious on how they think about it now, because I mean, they're they're good people to talk to. They they seem like they would be yeah, nice guys. It seems. Yeah, it's they, just they were nice to us on Twitter. Oh yeah, oh yeah. They they. You can find them on pretending, pretending people. No, I think it's pretending pod. pod on Hang on, Twitter. double checking. The great thing about Twitter though is you have your at name, and then you have the other name, your ha- your handle, whatever you yeah, want to call it. Pod. So it's pretending at pretending pod, but if you were to type in pretending to be people, that's their other name on yeah, there. You'll you, still find them. Yeah. Wolf wants to hear from his babies. So you 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 really like Wolf? It seems I fucking love that character because uh, that one they have to do on the fly. They have to actually do that one yeah, that, as the episodes are coming that's out. That's got to be which, meant for the edits. Which I'm like, that's okay. That's fine because uh, at six nine four point two p t p b b b p b t b b <laughs> I'm having a little bit of a stroke now. Um, mop, <laughs> mop. Uh, I do enjoy him. I do. I I hope to write something out to hopefully get read on the air. That sort of thing. That kind of little just, nudge. But then again, they're in the city now. You know, I think so, it's right there. Six to nine. Yeah, I know. Four point two p t b p. Oh, okay. Wow. <laughs> so we're right in front of us. I think I was close. You were close. I I, I, I realize it's now. just pretending to be people. Yeah. <laughs> PTBP is pretending to be people. I hate you right now. <laughs> I fucking hate you. Um, no, but I mean, I, I love pretending to be people. Uh, I started listening to the other one you mentioned. Uh, Sounds like crows. I okay. actually, I actually managed you, to. Did you go back into it? I, I delve back into it. I'm episode four right now. That one's got a guy that sounds just like Piper. A little bit, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I was like, like that, and then there was one that sounded like a, another friend of mine okay. that we don't, that you don't know, but um, I was like, damn, you don't have friends. Well. <laughs> No, you have friends. You have, you have more friends than I do. Yeah, I just don't like claiming any of them. <laughs> You're right. You know who you are. Yeah. James. <laughs> no. Um, Ouch. He knows I love him. Uh, Run down a flight no. of stairs and give him a hug in the morning. My my point is with you loving Wolf the dog is that last week you just kind of started talking in Wolf's voice while sitting on my couch. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I did. Uh, as we were as we were changing uh, from uh, our next subject, which is the uh, the movies we watched last week. Uh, Star Trek and Star Trek Into Beyond. No, <laughs> Into Darkness. Into Beyond Darkness. Is... I'm fucking. I'm, no, wait. I'm, I'm losing my mind right up. now. 
I think I am having a stroke. You got me fucked up now. It is into, it is uh yeah, it's into, into darkness. darkness. And You're beyond's right. the next one. Uh I, I was like, okay, oh my lovely babies. It's time for Wolf the Dog to switch up and hit up the great into darkness. Yeah, you know, it's a really good thing that my girlfriend is your cousin. Because I feel like if I was dating anyone else, they'd be like, What the fuck is wrong with your friend? <laughs> Instead I have to I get to look at her and go, What the fuck's wrong with your family? <laughs> and you're just now asking that? Oh dude, I've been asking that since the day I met you. I met you before we, me and her were dating, so... <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But... But you're not mad. You're entertained. I'm entertained. You, you annoy me sometimes. I want to push you down the stairs, and I stop and go, you might break something of mine. <laughs> I, I'm durable. I can get up and do some shit. <laughs> no, uh, let's <laughs> move on let's to, move on to our movies. movies. So, I had him sit down and watch Star Trek and Star Trek Into Darkness, the two J.J. Abrams ones. The, the newer ones. Okay. Now, going into this, the only thing I've ever watched is two to three episodes of Next Generation. That's it. Picard, right? Picard. And this was way back when. Yeah. This was when I was being babysat in like 97, 96, 97. Like, that's how long ago that I watched it. So you probably watched it while it was happening. Yeah, I believe so, okay. yes, because my babysitter at the time was uh, a super fucking nerd. He's the one who originally had, like, the OG second edition of D&D book that was kind of sparking it in my mind. That reminds me. Hello. The place I was telling you about. Yeah. Sorry, guys, a little off subject. I went to a place called Meepleville on Tuesday, which is a board game cafe here. And I'm super interested. They have a section that you're not allowed to touch anything. You're not allowed to buy them. They are on display only, and it's classic board games, and he had an original D&D box. Oh yeah! Oh my! Like, let me just let me just. Let me I just, just want to smell it. Yeah, I was about to say. Let me just <laughs> smell it or feel the aura that emanates let from that. Let me taste the air around it. <laughs> okay. Um. But sorry. Back to this. Uh. But Star Trek. Uh. I have minimal. I. I'm not too keen on it. But the movies were very entertaining. It taught me about the characters. It taught me about who they were. Uh. In relation to, it kind. You said it changed up from the actual narrative of the show a little bit because you said that. Ahura was supposed to be with Picard? Uh, no. Uh, or with... Kirk. And it's not Kirk. that they're supposed to be. It's just that when there was like a Kirk. romance thing, was it, it was with Kirk. Fuck. Um, I am having a stroke, Quincy. <laughs> but no, like, there were a lot of changes. You know, Kirk and Spock being on the outs with each other, things like that. You know, uh, Kirk's dad dying and yada, yada, yada. Yada, yada, Um, And that's because of the time travel variant thing that happens. Which... Now, Super, super fucking nice way of doing it, too. Yeah. And this is after watching a movie with time travel that pissed me off a couple weeks ago called Endgame. Yeah. Okay. We're not going to get into that. No. Though. So, you watched the first one. Yeah. What were the negatives from it? And I know what you're going to say. And I warned you going in. Um, I'm actually not going to throw it in the negatives. Like, okay. I can see that it's an art style. Okay. It's not bad. Don't get me wrong. A couple made me go, eh. And if you don't know, then you haven't watched this movie or you don't know J.J. Abrams. We're talking about the lens flare. The huge lens flare, but I wouldn't call it a negative. It's it's a lot. It's very excessive, but I wouldn't say it's a negative. My would... issue has always been that it takes me out of the movie because it makes me realize I'm watching a movie. Because it, yeah. it makes me go, oh, yeah, oh. that's right. I'm looking through a camera. Okay, yeah. Okay, I can see that. And a little bit of after effects. <laughs> yeah, you know, the pupil size change. Yeah, uh, but I'm, I'm, not, I'm not too aggravated on that. The one major issue I had with the OG, Into Darkness was pretty fucking good. Benedict Cumberbatch? Uh, Benedito Cumberbatch, yeah. Yeah, he um, killed it. He fucking, I don't, I don't think I've ever seen anything Benedito Cumberbatch has ever been in that has been bad. Benedict Cumberbatch. <laughs> Antonio Banderas. Oh, I, I, I feel like I have to say his name correctly because I listen to several podcasts yeah, that I know. all have variations of his name. So you over here with Com Bandito, Bandito Cumberbun. Uh Lauren will say uh Cucumber Cabbage Patch. Um Kevin Smith likes to call him uh what is it? Uh Benedict Cumberbatch. <laughs> so I'm like I feel like I have to be the one going Benedict Cumberbatch. <laughs> okay, you'll 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 be the the, oh, the yeah. straight lace guy. That's yes. fine. I mean I I love him. I love him to death. No, I no, he's I, amazing. I, I thought I think he if was... I ever said two words to him, it would probably be humna humna. <laughs> like i don't think i could actually focus in in his presence he has done a lot of amazing work yeah he's great as sherlock sherlock uh strange strange uh into darkness, into darkness. as con con that was a, that was a good scene that was uh, a good change up too versus who does it originally versus who does no. it in this one yeah um 
what what else what you know i'm gonna see what else he's done while we talk about this but uh i i fucking love into darkness that one i i have to say a lot less lens flare yes uh no real negatives there's a little bit of story thing that i'm not gonna go into but i mean it's very minor it's it's like a one out of ten it's like it's not gonna cause me to go this movie sucks because of this no it's it's not the greatest pull but I'm the kind of person that can watch Star Trek and Star Wars. I don't believe yeah. in the whole feud of one's better than the other. God now, if God I God. had if I had to choose one, Star Wars. I'm, I, I'm already leaning toward that way. I get into Star Wars way more than I do I Star mean, Trek, which is weird because there's more Star Trek than there is Star Wars. Yeah, and I mean to be fair though, with Star Wars though, you have. I mean, do you with all the games and all the the epitaphs all the novels do you think that there is more trek than wars well yeah because star trek's got just as many novels they've had four or five tv shows That's plus an animated seasons. show you're okay um, you're right these movies plus the original movies and now they've got the new show coming out picard which i saw the trailer for by the way it was really sad um they've got games as well they've got board games computer games phone games their games aren't I'm just going to say they're not as good as a lot of the Star Wars games, but not saying that every Star Wars game has been good because they haven't. No, there's, there's, I, I would say for every 10, there's one. So one out of 10 ain't bad. Because yeah. let's see here. Uh, Jedi Academy, Jedi Academy 2, pretty good games. Uh, Dark Forces, really good for its time eh, for a shooter that's in, in, but just before Quake came out, mm-hmm. I'd say it's fine. Uh, Force Unleashed, yeah, uh, Force Unleashed, Force Unleashed 2, pretty good games. Mm-hmm um the original battlefronts kotors battlefront battlefront 2 battlefront 2 the new one is probably the bad one so there you go there's well, your no, one okay, so Ooh. i i will i will stand up for that one uh okay, playing the campaign one. battlefront one there uh, battlefront one had... it was i didn't like it just because of how stale the combat i didn't was. like having to wait 10 minutes for it to fucking load that too even on pc um oh, when i had fucking code pc yeah but with two, it had a very interesting campaign that actually kind of bridged a little bit of a gap between the des- uh, the destruction of the um, Death Star to the beginning of uh, Force Awakens. Yeah, it doesn't fill everything out, but it filled out it, some it, stuff, it, it, and you got to see people from the Empire's perspective. Yeah, which was interesting. Um, and even online, I I don't mind the online. Honestly, the big blight on that game is the loot boxes. The loot boxes and the heroes, because if your if your team is fucking doing shit trash and you're trying to carry, you can't carry a whole a whole shit bag. Yeah, which I I don't like that multiplayer facets always deal with. Okay, this guy is dying a lot because you know he's having a bad day, that sort of thing. Let's just have the whole team lose because that's that's the way it goes it's by points meanwhile there are game modes that try and affiliate this mm-hmm. called like a, a capture the flag that sort of thing where even if one person's doing bad just as long as you have one person doing exceedingly well the whole team can get carried yeah so it's i don't know I, me and shooters have a long history and i don't i don't want to go well, i was gonna say like i feel like that's true with most uh online shooters like a little bit of my history i uh, i actually tried out for optic gaming way back in the modern warfare 2 era fancy yeah i try i tr- i was i was like leaning into it and then as soon as uh as soon as they were like hey yeah send us some more of this uh this footage we might be able to work out a contract never sent anything in lazy bastard no <laughs> uh, i'm I, now looking at it right now i am very glad i did not join optic yeah um i've never been good enough to do anything like that so <laughs> i mean this was also <laughs> god ages ago wow. um pull up gun so that you can finish talking about that oh right uh, so having watched them, you enjoyed them, mm-hmm. and we're going to watch number three tonight, which is Beyond. Yes. Which I haven't seen either, so that'll be interesting. Oh, cool. Um. So obviously, there's the Marvel stuff that he did. Yeah. Um. I forgot he's uh, Smaug, 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 Smaug in the Hobbit movies. And he's is he the Grinch in the Grinch? Uh, this new animated one, yeah. Okay. When I didn't watch it, I have not watched it either. But I heard it was a good retelling in in today's animation because like it, Illumination is trying to do all of the Grinch stuff or all of the um Doctor Seuss Doctor Seuss stuff, and I'm like, that's fine. I think not, it was we had the Jim Carrey one, we were good. Uh, mm, I didn't loved it. It was okay. I, I don't know. He, car for a bit. Whenever he puts on makeup, he overacts. That's what I feel. But I'm, I'm not <laughs> saying it's a bad thing. I'm just saying, holy shit, he fucking overacts. He chewed up the scenery. I, I enjoyed he it. He chewed the fuck yeah, out uh, of the I didn't see 12 Years a Slave. I've heard it's amazing. Um, um, I haven't seen the Imitation, uh, Imitation Game I heard was good. 
uh, Brexit, uh, that is going to probably be a really controversial film that I will not talk about on this podcast. He's balding in the poster. It's kind of weird. Yeah. Uh, let's see what else he did. Um, but yeah, you liked him as Khan? Khan, yes. Uh, I don't know. Uh, War Horse, I heard, was good. Uh, I haven't seen most of these. The other Hobbit movie, Thor Rack. Was he in? Uh, uh, Cutscene. Oh, that's right. Uh, Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy was a good one. I want to say I saw parts of that one, but I didn't finish it. Oh, finish it, dude. The fucking ending alone made me go, this is probably up in my top 10. Eh, top 20. I wouldn't throw it that high up. Um, Penguins of Madagascar? I didn't know he did that. Oh, I don't know if I could say he's everything he's been in now. Because I, if I've never heard of it, I, I like don't know. Is the way to kill your career, honestly. I mean, he, I mean, thank God he survived. <laughs> I didn't know it was in Zoolander 2. I didn't see Zoolander 2. I did not see it either. I It went over my radar. Over, under, around. It, it didn't exist. Under your radar would be the correct term. Whatever. Uh, And then just a whole lot of other walk with me. Oh, he did uh, Marple. Murder is easy. Cool. Yeah. Uh, Agatha Christie. Same one that... Same writer that created uh, Hercule Poirot. So I'd say a vast majority of Bandito Cumberbund's movies oh, he's are... He's a good actor. Yeah, he's a really good actor. So you've watched all of Sherlock. I still have yet to watch the last season. Um, you remember the one where... Uh, spoilers. They Yeah, spoilers. Not really, but yeah. Mm. They show the older couple sitting on his couch, and then later on he mentions his parents, and that's when it dawns on Watson that that was Sherlock's parents sitting on the couch. Mm-hmm. Uh, ben uh, Cumberbatch's parents. Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh! Just like the one that plays... Spoilers. Uh, Watson's wife is his real-life wife. So... They like to do that, it seems. And the way that they did some of the characters in the new Sherlock, I like it. Has, yeah, it definitely has good writing. All right, now it's time to get to some well, news. Before we do that. Oh. Uh, so we watched Star Trek and uh, Into Darkness. You enjoyed yeah. them both. Yeah. Tonight we will be watching Beyond and Reservoir Dogs because yes. we realized you haven't seen it. Or I don't have any reflection of it. Okay. So. Next week, I've only got one movie picked so far, but we're going to do Fanboys. Now, oh, you'd mentioned that I would, I would like the bits and pieces of it because of how I think everyone needs to see this. It's a movie that was made after the prequels had already come out, but it's made as if before the prequels came out for Star Wars, and it's about these Star Wars fans that are going to take a road trip to break into um, uh, Skywalker Ranch to see the prequels. Is that, is that a real place? Yeah, it's the ranch he owns. Oh, we'll look up images and stuff later. I'll show you all about Skywalker Ranch. Okay, that'll be so, later, though. That's but... one of uh, next week's movies. We'll see what else we add to that. But tonight, it okay. is uh, Beyond and Reservoir Dogs. So be prepared for us to talk about those next week. Yes. Now we can move to your news. All right. So um, I've only played this console once. It's the Ouya. Um, on the 25th, it'll be shut down for, for permanence. The entire app store, all that nonsense. I mean, it got crowdfunded really well. And it did really well i think when i looked up how many units it sold i got four different reports showing four different numbers because of the backers from kickstarter Mm -hmm. because of actual consoles sold in certain stores i've gotten uh just one overall and even still the one overall didn't make sense for the 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 backers or the one sold in stores and i was like this this whole thing doesn't make sense and Razer bought them out not too too long ago, just to say we're done with that. We're we're it's not enough. It, I can see why they would want to get rid of it. It only played very very specific games for it. I liked its concept, but terrible execution. See, so yeah, and as where I was, and you're telling me about this, and I'm like, I have seen plenty of mobile games that are available on PC, and even some that have moved to console. So mm-hmm. I think it's just. The mobile game companies need to start making games that are worth going onto other platforms rather than trying to make a platform for those games. Yeah. I mean, they tried. They tried to they, they tried to make some things for it. Um but now it's going to rest in peace. And anyone who owns a Ouya, grab any of the offline games that you can that's not gonna be supported anymore for it. Uh if you're wanting to at least have it relevant for that sort of thing before it just turns into a media box because that's all it's going to be used for after uh the twenty fifth. Well the question is how long will it run as a media box? I mean look at Netflix, they just shut down the servers for the well, Wii not too long ago because there's no point in it anymore. I meaning uh it has a USB port to plug in your own oh, personal movies. Gotcha. Just go buy Roku. Yeah, just go buy Roku. <laughs> You'll buy, be fine with that. Uh, or a uh, fucking smart Apple TV. TV. Yeah, fuck it. You know, I I'm gonna be honest. I have a smart TV. 
TV. I have two smart TVs, actually. Um, I do not like either one of them, and they are different brands. Um, I would rather make a really good quality TV smart by plugging in a Roku or Fire Stick or Chrome or anything like that over buying a smart TV. I just don't. I don't enjoy the smart TVs. They don't get updated enough. Things crash so easily. Navigating them is a pain in the ass. It just yeah. You see what happens when we plug in uh, things to it to you know for media we and try to run through the TV. You know, sorting through it is almost impossible. Yeah. So let's move on to this. Another. Okay. This is another another console, console. thing. Um. So <sighs> I'm gonna take a moment to to just try and explain this. A black and white console. With a very strange hand crank on the side that looks like a Game Boy Color esque with a little bit more compactness. Yeah, it looks like a tiny fat, not like fat backwards and forwards, but fat to the sides Game Boy Color. And the crank reminds me of a fishing rod. And that that's what they're thinking that it's going to be used for uh, is spe- very specific games. And uh, it has a forward-facing camera and a back-facing camera, and I'm like this, and a, a microphone and all this, and I just I don't understand what this is. But for 149 dollars, you can get yourself something called the Playdate. Um, I can't believe it's black and white in 2019. I I don't know. I don't know. Until I see a little bit more, maybe we might get something because um, uh, Crankins. Crankin's Time Travel Adventure, which is from the, the makers of Ketamare Damasi, which is one of my favorite games on the PlayStation. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I'm excited to see more, but yeah, you're right. The black and white has me a little bit shaded. Um, I, I don't know. I have no clue what to think I, about this. I don't own anything handheld anymore. Um, Lauren has the 3DS, but I don't have one of my own. I would prefer to buy a 3DS over this personally. I, I don't see the I, appeal. I could see a 2DS being in my in my future just because I don't like the 3DS. I wouldn't effect. use the 3D anyways, but the problem is most of the 2DSs are ugly. <laughs> oh, yeah, the, the weird uh, pie cut. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't know. I also don't like the name, Playdate. I, I don't know why, but it makes me uncomfortable. Yeah. It's weird. I don't know what it is. Okay. Uh, so this is going to kind of branch into a few directions. So... 15,000 people just signed a petition to make Danny DeVito Wolverine. And it's hilarious. Um, for a couple of reasons. One, I don't think Danny DeVito would ever want to be Wolverine. Two, while he has the height for De- uh, for Wolverine with the way Wolverine is in the comics, I, he doesn't look anything like Wolverine past that. Um, three, it's this weird point we've reached where people go, if I make a petition, I might have a, have a chance. And it's like, no, no, no. I'm behind petitions for certain things yes the stanley statue yes i i'm for that petition um but i kind of have to agree with a tweet that kind of just recently went out uh yesterday joe hill stephen king's son tweeted i want to start a petition asking hbo not to remake the final season of game of thrones asking disney not to remake last jedi asking Warner brothers to cast robert pattison as batman because it's okay if a work of art isn't everything for everyone. We survived the Clooney nipples suit. It's cool. Kind of busy day today, but if someone wants to get the petition going, I'll sign. And I get it because I hated everyone who was like, oh, I didn't like the ending of Last Jedi. Here's a petition. Remake it. You get the fuck over it. It's, it's remade. I understand doing a petition when your show gets canceled. Hey, bring this back. We didn't want this to go. What is wrong with you? You're looking at Nielsen numbers. Nielsen numbers don't tell you everything. You know, whatever the case is. I'm fine with those petitions, but saying remake the ending uh, uh, ending of Last Jedi because I didn't like it, or uh, remake uh, Game of Thrones, Game of Thrones because the last season was crap. You know, I that's, no, that's dumb. It, it is, and I don't watch Game of Thrones, and I heard about plenty of problems with the Game of Thrones thing, and I was just like, oh well, that's how it ends. Have fun, you know. That's where I left it. At. I, I didn't move into like the oh, I, I would be outraged if I was a fan. I probably would be outraged if I was a fan, but. And, and I've watched plenty of shows where I was outraged with the ending. I watched Time Much Mother as it was coming out. So when that ending happened, I was pissed. At no point did I go, I'm going to force them to change it. No, you, that, you you rolled with the punches. Yeah. I do agree with the one for Sonic because, like... Holy fuck! Like, it didn't look right, you I know? Can, like, 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 I follow three artists on Twitter, mm-hmm. and they all had their own renditions that looked ten times better. Like, hold on, hot diggity demon, uh, Sonic adapt. 
Like, look at... Oh, wait, no. Uh, oh, now I can't find his remake for it, but I, I know it's out there somewhere. But even still, Hot Diggity Demon, also known... Uh, yeah, no, he's on the same as on on YouTube. He's a very good artist. He He's very, very cynical. He calls himself fat, depressed, stupid, and has a, a, a ghost partner named Goofball. That sounds kind of like me. Yeah. Like, um, right there. Gotcha. <laughs> um, but he, 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 he kind of steps up on a platform like us, but he only does, he does animations. Uh -huh. So it takes more time, more effort, and he actually puts in a lot of actual work into making a fuck eight minute long video at best mm -hmm. on one subject. Like he did Dungeons and Dragons not too, too long ago. Like he tried to explain the wonder and splendor of Dungeons and Dragons to goofball, his partner and uh, goofball, you know, tries to play along. But of course being an outsider to understand D and D it makes him go, well, that's, that's, that's kind of dumb worrying about numbers and shit. You know, and he explains well. You don't realize it. You do it in so many video games. Yeah. Peter just does it for you. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, the the Sonic thing, I, people were unhappy, and, and they made the petition to change it. At, at the end of the day, it, it's up to the companies as to whether or not they're going to listen to these petitions. But understand, just because you did the petition doesn't mean people are going to listen to you. Don't get mad when they don't, because you're not petitioning, you know, for a law. You're not petitioning for, like, you're petitioning for you know, a, a re-rendering of a character or like with the Game of Thrones thing, what was it? Seven episodes, eight episodes, however long the final season was. That's millions of dollars. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. You know, like, no, they're not going to blow millions of dollars. Like it, it's not going to happen. It just isn't. I'm sorry. So th that's kind of where I, where I have the end, like the petitions for like the Wolverine thing. Like It's funny. I don't think anyone actually takes it serious. And if you do, I mean, that's, that's on you. You can take it serious. I just, Understand, it's probably not going to happen. But, uh, yeah, look at look at all these redesigns. Yeah, like, there's been plenty of redesigns for the oh Sonic God. thing. But, but no, it was like when we watched better. people, we watched people do the redesigns for Venom too, and we saw way better things. Well, Venom, okay, to be fair, Venom wasn't bad per I love se. The googly eye cover, something. Yeah, like. the googly eyes might have been like, oh, that's funny, <laughs> but I don't think it was inherently bad. Mm -hmm. And I'm just trying to find the one of his take, because I actually liked his. God damn it. There it is. Oh, yeah, that looks pretty good. Like, uh, sure, the eyes don't do that weird attachment thing. He still has the teeth. Yeah, but he still has the teeth. <laughs> but he says, this is the best, this is the probably the best way you can keep those teeth. And I'm like, <laughs> wait, that comes out really bad. But, uh... No, no, that actually looks pretty good. Yeah. Like, and then you got the fucking eyeball in the mouth teeth in the eyes yeah all 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 mismatched the eyes are where the teeth is I'm a Picasso. And... <laughs> oh god um well let's move on to your um your gaming news my gaming news i got a lot of gaming news so uh we'll start with ghost raccoon so uh ghost recon breakpoint we we saw the trailer last week mm -hmm. uh we liked it watched a little bit of the gameplay not what? too much yeah uh and they announced a uh, a full collector's edition for $190. Uh, this one comes with a really nice figure. And I, I was like, man, I, oh, that's that's really cool. I, I, I'm leaning toward it. And you're like, what was so, the exact question you had asked? Okay, so the figure is of John Berthnall's character yeah. in the game. Yeah. And so I asked, how many John Berthnall statues can you have before it gets weird? And then I started doing a tally. I have uh, three of the Funko Pops of his character from Punisher. Two regular, one for him to sign later on. And then one of the Chase variant where he's holding on to uh, Daredevil's mask. Mm -hmm. um, I have his Legends, the, the Black Box Legends, and then the one that you got me from Maximum Comics. That's five. Yeah, and that one's one of those big statues. It was actually done in correlation with the Netflix show and everything. Yep, yep so and i'm like so six statues of one man like, i'm just wondering like where do we draw the line and i have billions of 
Spider-Man things around here. So it makes you wonder I, which one's which. Is I, it, is I've, I've it, crossed the line, but yeah, and it, I'm not saying you've crossed any line. It was, just, it was a moment where I stopped. And went, how it, many statues can it, you have one person before it, it gets weird? It, yeah, but the the thing of the point is, it's one person. Spider-Man multi multiverse. Yeah. It, it could be whoever. Most of these aren't even actually of anyone. They're just of the character. Yeah, and then meanwhile you have John Berthenal as this. Yeah. So I'm like. Oh, I, I kind of want it though. <laughs> but it's a really nice figure. It's him holding his hand cannon in one hand, aimed outward, while in the other hand he's holding like an FNFAL, and he's standing on top of this this rocky ledge. And you get a whole bunch of other stuff too. You get a nice steel book. You get a, I think it is a double double CD of the soundtrack and art book. Uh, you get a few lithographs. You get some dog tags, I think, of his character, and I believe that is a cloth map. Yeah, and the box even looks cool. The, the box looks cool. The steel box looks fuck. I love that design. Now, I have to say the one thing I don't like. <gasps> get three-day early access. I'm tired of the early access thing. Just right. release the game at the same day for everyone else. I, well, I don't Just know. Just because I give you extra okay, money. Let me, put, let me put it like this. You're paying $190 three days early. I'm okay with that. Yeah. <laughs> like, real talk, you're paying out the ass just for a three-day bump. If it was a week bump, that'd be better. Mm -hmm. But... I'm okay with it. I'm not going to, I'm not going to dox it. I, I just, you. I don't know. I, I feel like in this case, it's fine, I guess, because you're getting so much else. But like, I've seen games where it's like, if you pre-order it, you get the, uh, what was it? Season pass and you get the game three days early. It's like, why don't just make the game available three days early if it's available three days early? Yeah. Okay. I can see that. Like, cause I spent $20 more than that guy. I get it three days early. That That seems weird to me. I mean, maybe if you just pre-order it, maybe it gives it the three-day. I don't know. I guess, yeah. Um, Let's move on to this. Um, okay. So you'd mentioned this, and I and I kind of had a moment of, I don't know that, and then you mentioned the original. I was like, oh, wait, no, I do know that. So Okay. Um, I'm not too big a fan of Nio, but Nio 2 is coming out soon. And they said, here's an alpha test. I want you to stress test this game. If you have any bugs, report them, that sort of thing. They're wanting people to break this game. They're wanting to fix all these problems. Team Ninja is notorious for saying, we want good games released. We don't want very many bugs. Because when uh, Ninja Gaiden, either Black or Sigma, was coming out, it was one of the very first games that actually had problems playing, and they had to patch it out later. Meanwhile, you, you look at Team Ninja's record, and it's not too, too bad. They've done pretty well later on and nio was one that came out played well felt well i didn't get through it because i just i guess i just stopped playing it but it was fun it's a dark souls like game difficult mm -hmm. nio 2 hopefully the alpha test uh there are dates i believe uh da -da -da -da. may 24th to june 2nd we'll have an alpha test get in there break that game i want a lot of help developing these games. I'm glad companies like this do it. It's only going to be up to a certain point, of course, but I just want I just want this game to be as broken as can be and fixed when it finally comes out. And I'm glad that they're doing this to us to allow to aid in making this better. I, 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 I'm I like off it my too. soapbox now. <laughs> and I, I enjoy alphas and betas of games so that we can get them working right. But at the same time, it kind of makes me stop and go, why is this game $60 if you don't have a team that can break it? But that also raises up another question of they're smart enough to, to pardon me, to look for those things that break it. They're not going to go in to enjoy the, the concept. They're yes. going in and they're like, I'm being hit, but I got to work on this. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like they don't care. But meanwhile, people who don't have that experience, people who don't do QA for a living, they're just going, oh, I'll play around a little bit. If I get lost or whatever, I'll, I'll mention it to them that, you know, I, I couldn't do this because I got stuck here. You know, it, I glitched through the world. <laughs> I fell. I'm still following as we speak. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to record it using my phone. I didn't shut off the console. I've been falling for a week. <laughs> <laughs> I've fallen and I can't get up. Um, but no, I, I, I'm hoping that this game releases and i hope it becomes very well because i I, even I, just, I find it funny that this is what we do with video games you can't do this with anything else like here's a scenario for you you're coming to me to buy a car okay oh, okay and you come up to me and you go i want to buy that car okay i sell you the car and then you come back and go 
it didn't work right. And I go, oh, thanks. Yeah, you know, I was wondering about that. <laughs> like, it's not. Yeah, and you get to you you open up the hood, change a few things, <laughs> take out half the engine, put other other half in. And Did then... you were you able to repeat the problem? No. Well, then it's really not that big of a deal. Just drive it home. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I, just, I find you... it funny that we do this with video games. You can't do it with anything else. Yeah. Like the sandwich made me sick. How uh, sick? <laughs> are, are you dying? No. Okay. Let then, me make you another sandwich. Then it's, then it's not a yellow. <laughs> then it's not a yellow. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Barf the sandwich back up. I'll fix it. Uh, but I mean, it looks good. It looks. Great. I, I mean, we're looking at some of this this alpha footage or whatever. Yeah. Uh, it. it it requires you to to unleash your demonic side that sort of thing. So I'm 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 that said excited. Was the original this colorful? Uh, no, it was more gray. Okay, I was gonna say like reds. I don't remember this much color. Yeah, this one adds a lot more vibrancy to it. This one is only on PlayStation Four. Yeah, that uh, that's their thing with Team Ninja. And also, look at that cute little Kenku uh, looking. He looks like the alien from XCOM. <laughs> a little bit. Um, I do have to say, I feel like PlayStation 4 is really starting to crack down on the um, exclusives. Uh, they're Well, Team Ninja is kind of a subsidiary. Not just with Team Ninja. I know, I mean, but I'm just saying as far as. Um, that being said... It, kind of bugs me because there's times where i really really want to play a game on my xbox and it's only on playstation i just end up not buying it yeah and i like my playstation i do i just like my xbox better okay and i know that's an opinion thing speaking of an opinion thing so we both heard about this and i was gonna like gauge your reaction when i brought it up but since you already knew i couldn't really do that you want to know my reaction yeah. you, you okay when i first heard about it I was just scoping out for stories uh, two days ago, as soon as I got home from work. Uh, I started looking around, and I saw it. Well, saw thoughts of it. And uh, then the prior, uh, the following day, I saw it was announced. I was like, okay, cool. I want you to tell me why I should get it on mobile. Because this game is PC-oriented. If I wanted to play Nocturne on fucking League of Legends mobile version... I would need to have a fucking external controller something. Well, they make those. I know. But I'm saying to have to buy something for a god dang mobile game, I'd rather just sit at home and fucking play it on my computer. That's why my theory is that it's not going to be League of Legends. Well, it's being released by Riot. So. Yeah, Riot and, uh, what was it, Ten- Ten- Tencent? Tencent. Tencent and Riot Games are doing a League, for Le- League of Legends mobile game. They have not said that it is League of Legends or anything like that. My theory is it's either going to be some kind of card game or some kind of base builder or, you know, something along those lines. Maybe even a companion game. But it says developing mobile version of League of Legends in most of these. Oh, see, that's not the the article I saw. I didn't say of. I don't know. All I know is I played uh, Mobile Legends, which is the off brand. And I mean, it was fun for the first little bit. I I did uninstall it because I was like. I, I, I'm literally right over there next to my computer. I'd rather play League. Mm-hmm. Um, it was okay. It was okay. That's the best I can say. It, that it was fine. Uh, the characters did have the ripoffs of some of the League counterparts because you can only have so much originality in these types of games. There was a couple characters I was like, oh hey, she's kind of she's kind of interesting looking. But then you have right now in League a fucking cat on a book. You know, I, I downloaded uh, Monster World the other day. Oh, Monster Hunter? Or, yeah, Monster Hunter World. Mm-hmm. And the cat things immediately made me think of the new cat thing from League. <laughs> well, that, well, which technically Monster Hunters were first. Yeah, oh, they've, they've been out since but 2007. It, it kind of sparked that little moment in my mind where I went, oh, that reminds me of the cat thing from uh, League of Legends. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, Yumi, hopefully, is getting a fucking buff because she has the lowest win rate right now, which is not good. I'm just throwing that out there as, as a little bit of light shade to hopefully riot, fix your shit, quit nerfing Akali. Akali don't need the nerf. I'm done Which, ranting. Speaking of um, uh, Monster Hunter World, um, I didn't know what to expect going in. I knew very nothing, very pretty much nothing about it. Okay. I did not realize it was going to be an online game. Yeah. So you can, you can go offline. Yeah, but I was just like, I didn't realize that that was the concept behind this game. So it's not what I expected. I'm not mad about it. That's just on me for not doing my research. But it's a good looking game. Um, I feel like there's a slight bit of an issue I'm having in combat. Like, I haven't died or anything, but I just feel like sometimes I'm missing attacks I shouldn't be missing. 
Uh, that's been the, that, to be 100% honest, that's the way it's been since I started up back in Monster Hunter 2. Okay. So, I mean, this, this game has evolved a lot. Uh, I think my favorite iteration, if I had to choose one, would probably be Freedom Unite on the PS fucking P. And uh, even still, that one I was like, whiff, whiff. Uh, but then again, I, I chose a very low mobility character, mm -hmm. uh, build. So, I the, mean, that also is another play on. I did also didn't like that the tutorial just held your hand for so goddamn long. I was like, just let me it, into the game. It kind of has to, because if, if you didn't have that, it actually would have been difficult to handle some of these. I'm, especially, I'm sure, yeah. especially, huh? I said, I'm sure. Yeah, and, and especially later on, there's going to be an issue against a very specific Elder Dragon that you're going to be like, back to basics. Uh -huh. <laughs> but I, I've enjoyed it the little bit I've, I've played it. I only played it, played it for maybe like half an hour, an hour tops, something like that. Because I actually started it, then I had to run out of the house. Ah. Um, But it's on Game Pass right now. That's how, I, how I'm playing it. That's so, not bad. Um, Which, did you hear about Game Pass's uh, announcement? Oh! <gasps> <gasps> is dun, it bad dun, dun. oh it's amazing oh okay oh i'm in love i'm so glad that i pay for game pass and i'm sure you're so glad that i pay for game pass because <laughs> <laughs> you use my game pass i do use your game pass because <laughs> your console is kind of my console yeah um so, his name was my name oh, too. There you, go. you pulled it up i was okay so these are the ones that dropped today Ew. metal gear survive if survive which i know nothing about um Think Metal Gear Solid, but bad. So bad pachinko machine. No. Bad. Oh, worse. <laughs> okay. I would take the pachinko machine with a smile on my face, even though deep down inside I'd be dying. Um, but the other game I'm I'm noticing Banner Saga, probably one of my favorite storytelling games. Uh, it actually got a couple tears out of me. I never played two or three, but if it is anything like the you know like I know it is. Um, if you want a good story set in a very, very desolate time and it will rich at your, at your stomach. So I knew you were going to be excited about Banner Saga. So I've got uh, the rest of the list right here. So <gasps> Metal Gear Survive, uh, Survive and Banner Saga just dropped today. Cool. Uh, Void Bastards drops on the 29th. I don't know that one. Dead by Daylight drops on the 30th. Hey. That one I'm excited about. Um, you don't Outer Wilds, still, do you? Huh? You still don't own that one, do you? No. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Outer Worlds comes out on the 30th as well. Or, or, or sorry, not Worlds. Uh, Wilds. Outer Worlds is the new, new game. Yeah, yeah. Outer Wilds. Um, and then the sixth, we're getting Full Metal Furries, I think that says? Furies. Furies. Okay. Thank God, because I was concerned for a second there. <laughs> oh, and you're getting fucking Banner Saga 2. Well, that's what I was going to tell you. On the sixth, you're getting Banner Saga 2. So you get the whole thing. And then on the sixth, you get Super Hot, but... For people that already had gold, you already have Super Hot, so that one was kind of a lame plug. Yeah, it's fine. That, and I mean, once you beat Super Hot, yeah, you can do that like never-ending thing, but I got, I got burned out on that so quick. Yeah, it's it's a very small game. I mean, I could see spending 10 bucks, but they keep charging 20 for it. Yeah, so I'm glad I got it for free. I mean, if it was... Uh, I would have paid 10 bucks for it. The, I would not have paid more. The, the VR variant, though, uh, keeps adding shit, and I'm like, why? <laughs> Um, um, but, uh, Banner Saga 1, Banner Saga 2, good shit. Full Metal Furies, um, is an okay game. I need I'm to get back so into glad it. it's Furies, because I straight up thought it said Furries, and I was like, what the fuck is this game? And I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pretty much damn myself by saying this, but even Furries in gaming <laughs> isn't that bad right now. Um, Ori in the Blind Forest, probably one of my favorite games just from Atmosphere alone. Well, I'm um, not, I mean, fucking, I'm what not, the fuck I'm, is it called? Dust? I'm not saying... That I was like, oh, it's terrible because it's furries. Because like, that's a fucked up thing to say. I'm just saying, when I heard Full Metal fur uh, Furries, I was like, or uh. saw Full Metal Furries, I was like, what is this? Like, <laughs> like I don't, I can't comprehend this. Because I'm thinking Full Metal Jacket with furries. And I'm like, this is weird. This is weird. <laughs> uh, but uh, Dustin Elysian Tale is another good game. It's a good little slash em up. Uh, reminds me of. Uh, Shining Force, Shining Force Neo, a little bit because okay. of the the way the health bar works, the way uh, chain combos work, and then let's go to. No, full I'm curious. Metal. Yeah, pull good. up this one. Okay, like a tactical style. Okay, this looks kind of fun. A little, uh, pixelated. Yeah, pixelated thing. Um, I want to know what Void Bastards is. Oh yeah, I'm I'm curious on that one too now. Void. Because that's another one's coming out on that list that I don't know. Uh, first person comic book style. Hey, that looks a little interesting. 
Yeah, it's got the kaboom. What is that? Yes. Um. Okay, this one might be a little fun one to dick around on. Uh, I think this might be a roguelite. I don't. I don't know what. Pull up the description. Uh, you know what? Hold on. I'm gonna do. We're gonna pull it up on Steam. Inspired by Bioshock and System Shock Two. Good. Well, so it's inspired by System Shock Two because Bioshock was inspired <laughs> by System Shock Two. So. Oh, it's a bullet hell. Kind of, but it's not like a traditional bullet Ooh. hell. Ooh. So it says that it's inspired by those Void Bastards is a revolutionary new strategy shooter that will test your wits as well as exercise your aim. Can you lead the misfit prisoners of the Void Ark through the derelict spaceship and what is that? Uh, Myrid dangers of the Sar- uh, Sargassus Nebula. It looks interesting. I, you know what? I'm okay with this. It is it is a roguelite. It looks to be... And it's published by Humble Bundle. Oh, okay. Oh, doggy. All right. Uh, Humble Bundle does do a lot of exclusives, but they do they do it in the right way. Uh-huh. They make it so that way it's like, yeah, sure, you can buy it through us. You can activate it on Steam uh, if you, of course, purchase it through us. But if you get the free version, you know, you'll have to download the DRM free, but you can download it on any fucking on any pc you can attach to we we are not going to limit you to to an account or anything like that i'm like fucking amazing um i'm liking this oh, I, I'm, it, I'm definitely wait, gonna go download this huh it looks like it actually works on mac <laughs> which is another well yeah this is that's amazing pretty good uh, <laughs> uh, i'm excited uh it doesn't look to be too too graphically intensive but then again no. that's for pc but on on console i'm sure it's it'll fine. run fine on console I'm sure. um it's, it's only requiring 64 bit on PC. So. This month for Xbox Game Pass, I give it a stern 9 out of 10. The only reason why it's not a 10 on 10 is because fucking Metal Gear Survive is in there. Yeah, but I mean, you're essentially getting the game for free. Yeah, but yeah so Void Bastards looks good. I would I'm excited about uh, Dead by Daylight. Uh, the Banner yeah. Saga is good. Uh, super hot. Uh, go play it. Yeah. Um, the Furies one looks good. Uh, Outer Wilds is the other one. That we don't know. Oh, I'll check that in two seconds. Right now, I'm going to show you something. I don't need to see this crap. Oh, I'm going to show it to you. X, go and give it to you. He's forcing me to look at Metal Gear Survivor. Bam, look you at all You just this. lied to Steam about your age. Huh? <laughs> uh, 1988. You're not born January 1st. You were oh, my baby. God. <laughs> but uh, it, it has crafting supplies and all that. Are those dead bodies and... being floated away by balloons? Uh, they're zombies. Okay. Yeah. And then you have to do like some. Would it have been good if it wasn't Metal Gear? No, no, not even. It it had um, actual time elapsed things. I'm gonna download this just to piss you off. (laughs) I would have, I would have forcibly uninstalled it. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna download this just to piss you off. Yeah, no, I would have forcibly uninstalled it from your uh, Um, system. I don't give a shit. Uh, Outer Wilds, right? Hold on. I've been playing uh, some more Surviving Mars lately, and at first I was a little annoyed, but now I'm enjoying it now. I but saw you were playing that last it's night. It's a city builder on Mars. So yeah. if and you're not into city builders, you're not going to enjoy it. You probably saw me playing. What was I playing? Last I don't know. Night? I didn't check. Uh, <laughs> uh, I was playing, I think, Vegas 2 and uh, Outrun. So New Vegas. Uh, not New Vegas. On Rush. Um, That's it. Rainbow Six Vegas 2 is one you go back to a lot. I fucking love it. It plays like shit. Don't get me wrong. Like, it's very clunky. I like the first one. Yeah. I mean, uh, 2, two is I never go-to. played the story for 2. Yeah, I've two, only played. Uh, it's. It's um, bomb threat hits the strip and basically find where the bombs are. Okay. And you run into like a car- halfway cartel and the inside agent is just trying to figure that out too. And then all of a sudden the cartel isk begins to figure out what's going on and says, hey, I don't like that. I now know you're an inside agent. Are you fucking lying to me? Are you fucking bugged? And then takes him out. And then <laughs> are it creates... you or are you not a knock? <laughs> I, a what? A knock. <laughs> oh, a narc. <laughs> I love that movie. That's a good movie. Um, oh, that, oh, that was Outer Wilds. Outer, yeah, Outer Wilds. It looks interesting. I mean, these photos aren't explaining the game to us, though. Yeah, I just see a weird dude. It's cool artwork. Wearing a, a diver's helmet with the little. It's Kevin Cutner's ghost. The, I don't fucking know, my dude. Uh, what the fuck is yeah, this? Yeah, give me a description of the game because these images aren't telling me. They shit. are telling. It's us. cool artwork. Uh, okay, Outer Wilds is an open world exploration action oh, adventure. You took it away. I didn't know it had one on the right. I'm <laughs> sorry. Uh, oh, it actually isn't available yet on Steam. So, so this, this is a launch gonna... title. Cool. 
Uh, they've done it before. Um, I know. It's... So this is cool. You know, this is one. This is one is launching on Game Pass. You're getting a brand new game. For All free. right. Welcome to the space program. You're the newest recruit of Outer Wilds Ventures, a fledging fledgling <laughs> space program searching for answers in a strange, consistently evolving solar system. So that makes me wonder: Is it going to be uh, procedurally generated? Probably. I mean, that's one of the bigger things in games now is making sure each time you play it's different. Making sure that no one has the same experience. And you're dying over there. Oh, I almost sneezed. I don't like sneezing. Sneezing kills me. It, it hurts my shoulder now. Um, But, oh, hello. Got oh. a little bit of uh, gameplay. Ooh, watch oh. that uh, space debris. Oh, I'm I'm going to be excited because it's a mystery. Explore a handcrafted solar system, it says. Okay, so no, it's not precision. No. Anyway, then. But it looks really nice. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll give this one a shot. Um, maybe I'll do sh- t- uh, take a try a chance at it before Ooh. next week's episode and let you know. I can't make any promises. Well, wait, when does it come out? You said it comes out. Oh wait, yeah, this one comes out later. Yeah, this I think it comes out a little bit. Is the thirtieth? Okay, so so it will come out on, on next the, week's episode. So I the probably week won't. after. <laughs> no, it's seven days from today. I know the thirtieth. I, are you gonna play it the morning of? Oh, oh no, you're. Say, I thought you were saying it comes out the week after next week's episode. <laughs> I'm like, no. Yeah, I'm saying I probably we'll won't get to it the morning. It. I probably won't get to the morning. Uh, so I mean, so. I'm I'm super excited for this coming up uh, Game Pass. It's yeah. just fuck. Now God I suggest you start following Xbox Game Pass on Twitter because whoever runs it is fucking funny. Okay, all right. You got I'm just going to show you the first one here. Okay, just take a little look at that, and you'll just see. Why. <laughs> <laughs> see. Okay. So it's, it's someone up. going, "Stop throwing all these games at me! I don't have enough time." And they said, "Us." Colon and it's Stitch throwing the book at the fucking Secret uh, agent. Service Agent Smith type guy from Lilo and Stitch, and they just continue. They 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 went for like twenty or thirty replies straight with different people. Always. Oh, I don't like that. I don't like it. I don't like that they use that. And so like whoever runs and like the Game Pass people will fuck with the regular Xbox Twitter account too. <laughs> it's like it's like uh Paul from HR. He don't give a fuck. <laughs> Pretty much. Game Pass is Ralph. We are bunny. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't gotten to the waffles yet. <laughs> all right. All right. Their Twitter's pretty fun. They 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 know what they're doing. Um but I mean that and we get a lot of games every month on here. Um and I also like that they do a section that lets you know the games are leaving. So and but, they support Red Nose Day. And they, um, uh, Microsoft does. Yeah. So, seeing as we just now talked about it, uh, Red Nose Day today, as we are speaking, have released um, a few little tiny snippets here and there, and a very special one-off campaign where it is Matthew Mercer and Stephen Colbert. That and was for Red Nose Day? It is for specifically Red Nose Day. Specifically? Specifically. Like the ocean? Yes. With an S <laughs> at the beginning. Um... Uh, it, 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 of course, has the theme of Red Nose Day. Uh, Stephen Colbert is a half-elf bard going on a quest to find a, a red nose That's what uh, of generosity. I like that. Um, and uh, it, Matt, of course, pulls out his voices, and he, of course, makes a very, very short journey, but he makes it pretty wholesome. He makes it really well. Uh, and... Uh, a tinkerer is trying to figure out how to make the nose work and so of course steven goes in and says you know hey i can get it to work wink wink nudge nudge and dupes this l- lich i would assume because he, he died by a horcrux spoilers sorry but go listen to it it's it's very wholesome it is so wholesome. go ahead and explain what red nose day is people for those okay. that don't know red nose day is a holiday i'm going to go ahead and say it's a charitable holiday mm-hmm. to where uh we spread generosity through the power of laughter or red noses uh and let's see who's behind it walgreens m&ms walgreens is the biggest one i see uh monster energy um dawn dish soap fucking bounty paper towels apparently microsoft uh microsoft um pringles uh lays potato chips like all these companies are all shaking hands in it so and, when you buy a red nose from like Walgreens or a participating product, what do they do with the money? Um, I believe it is ten cents to the dollar with regular products. Mm-hmm. I believe it, it's it's up to of course the limit, and then for the red noses, it's two dollars for a red nose or a pin or uh, something of the sort. And you can donate whatever you want. You can say I want to donate the change to make it an even an amount. Yeah. 
that so on so on and forth um and then of course all of it goes to the charity and it's a non-profit organization they are legit the 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 cost of the noses is only i think a dime per so everything that's being spent on the products that you're purchasing is going toward the noses mm-hmm. the noses are getting straight uh donations okay and they tried doing something interesting that I'm okay with. They added characters to the noses. Yeah, back when we bought our noses, they were just the regular felt ones. Yeah. They weren't even like these shiny new nice ones that they have. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but, I mean, Red Nose Day, I believe, is me. I think it's today. I think it's today. Let's uh, find out next time on Dragon Ball Z. Rock the Dragon. Um, yeah, uh, let's see. Red Nose Day, $150 million, $60 million children, yada, yada, yada. From May tw- uh, 16th to 23rd, every new sign up for uh, paid one or three month uh, Xbox Game Pass membership. visit. So, okay, they are also donating. Yeah. For every time you purchase up to a three month. Okay. So, go back, back to the top really quick. So, it is May 23rd. Okay. And so, right here it explains. No, no too far up. Oh, sorry. Uh, originated in the United Kingdom, Red Nose Day launched in the United States in 2015. To date, has raised nearly $150 million and positively impacting the lives of over 16 million children across the nation and around the world. Through the power of entertainment, Red Nose Day raises money and awareness to keep children in need safe, healthy, and educated. Yeah. So, it's good. It's a good cause. I, I never have any problem supporting this one. Yeah, no, I don't either. I know we're not really affiliated with it, but we're just going to give the shout out. For I, it. you know, I've actually donated to a decent amount of charities and stuff like that. And I, I don't do it from, you know, I'm trying to gain any publicity or anything. I, you know, you know I, I do it from, you know, I've got the extra, so I might as well. Yeah. Um, I, I've, I've already given, I think, 12, 12, 15. Are points, you, just offhand. am I remembering wrong? Or are you able to donate your points or something like that at Walgreens? Yeah, or is that an old thing? That it's was, can't do anything. That was, not a thing that you could do. I know it was on uh, Xbox. Maybe that's they, Yeah, you can okay. do your Xbox points. I don't know if you can use your points on it, considering it's a charity. But, I mean, if you have points through Walgreens, I, I would say give it a shot. Or yeah, purchase products that participate for it. Because, yeah. as I said, p- play. Play. there's so fucking Monster Energy drinks. I think Red Bull's a part of it this year. Ooh, I like Red Bull. Yeah. Uh, and you tried out their new flavor, the the Beach Breeze. I did not like that. No, it was a <laughs> pina colada. And I'm like... Ooh. Yeah, it was basically a pina colada. The coconut kind of ruined it. Yeah. Uh, but enough about the Xbox stuff. Uh, oh. da, 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 da. let's move on. Yeah, we can move on to that one. This one. So I like I like Archer. I like Archer too, but I kind of checked out now that he's in spoilers, a coma, and everything for the last like four seasons have been in his head. I don't know. It just it. I it, know it, it made the episodes seem like they didn't matter anymore. Uh, but then at the same time, they're still entertaining. I I get that. It's just. I mean, what TV show without an actual story structure? would say that it mattered. But that that's the thing. There was a story structure when the show started out. They just kind of get got rid of it after a while. So I'm not it saying gets- don't watch it. I still think it's a green, uh, great show. I just I haven't watched in a while. And actually, the new season looks really good, so I might go and watch. <laughs> but FX just greenlit um, because the new season is Archer 1999. They just uh, greenlit uh, what they're calling Archer After Hours. It'll basically be Talking Dead, Talking Preacher. Talk Smokin' uh, Yeah. You know, it'll be a talk show that'll be happening after the episodes air. Um, it's described as a, a uh, talk show, sketch show, and party with special guest interviews, behind the scenes commentary, cosplay, spotlights, and more. So, three um, episodes. Amber Nash, who plays Pam, and Lucky Yates, who is Krieger, are going to be part of it. So cool. Okay, two, Pam, two. Pam's fucking hilarious. Yeah. So. <laughs> fucking a country girl that gives no fucks, a brawler, likes to get fucking high, drunk, and just spe- likes to get fucked. <laughs> yeah, likes to get fucked. <laughs> that's where you were going for. So like, yeah, that's Pam. <laughs> like all, all, all of the above. Does she do this, this, this? Yes. And then Krieger, who may or may not be Hitler's clone. <laughs> Not taking that off the table, but a very interesting... They touch on it in one of the seasons. Did they? Uh, yeah, they probably, the they probably did. <laughs> I, was, I was... He starts to I don't... freak out because he's like, am I? <laughs> like, I, I, I think that he might be a sleeper cell, considering the way he acts, but... No I think one he's said... just crazy. <laughs> I think he's crazy too, but I also think that he actually is a sleeper cell. Um, The show had some running gags that I really loved that they also started to get out, and I think that's one of the things that kind of got to me was, really, no more phrasing? We're not using phrasing anymore. 
I mean, it's inside your head. You can bring it back if you want. Um, and then there's the fact that there's the guy, spoilers, who always got shot. And then they finally actually did kill him off. I was like, oh, <laughs> I wanted that to keep happening. But no, it's a good show and I enjoy it. And the idea of the talk show, it's interesting. And these talk shows ha- are becoming a bigger thing. And it's a good way to you know get people to stick around for another 30 minutes to an hour after the show's ended. Because they're like, well, I was already invested in that show, so now I'm invested in this new thing. Yeah. So, and then to do it with actual people from the show, that's pretty cool too. Yeah. Um, what do you want? Let's move on to your George R. R. Martin. Okay. I like George R. R. Martin as a writer. I love it. Mm-hmm. But you had made mention that it took him a while just to even get to as far as he is in Game of Thrones, which isn't writing. a bad thing. I understand writing no, 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 can no. be difficult and whatnot. Yeah. I just. If you're having issues, be honest, is my whole thing. Yeah, and I mean, that that's fine and fair. But the boy is leaning in to touch my From Software. See, when you say that, it sounds really dirty. I don't give a <laughs> damn. Uh, so he's he's writing out for the, the next Dark Souls, question mark? I don't know. Uh, they're saying From Software RPG written by George R. R. Martin is called Great Rune. And I'm like, I, I don't know if I can trust this this whole thing. But I, I'll take it as far as I can throw it. I'm super excited. I am not going to take away from it because it's going to be Norse-themed. Having Frost Giants, Draugr, all that sort of shit. And I'm like, cool, cool. Now that it's, you know, Frost Giants shit, you really need that fucking final fire. <laughs> yeah. Um, Miyazaki, not that Miyazaki, is coming back as um, the... Uh, director. I'm curious as to what Miyazaki you thought I was thinking because I don't know any Miyazakis. Uh, um, Hayao Miyazaki? Ponyo? Uh, Kiki's Delivery Service? Oh, okay. Yeah. There's... Studio Ghibli stuff, right? Okay. There you go. Gotcha. Yeah, there's two Miyazakis I know. <laughs> I was like, you're like, not that Miyazaki. I'm like, I haven't even made a connection to one Miyazaki yet. <laughs> you're you. ahead of me. But so, you since we brought him up, we should totally touch on it. Um, I don't watch Game of Thrones. I, I stopped after season... Three? I have not seen a single episode. Uh, uh, get the, the pitchforks and torches it... ready, huh? Yes, I get the pitchforks and torches ready. I understand. I, I, I don't. Uh, people watch what they watch because they like it. Yeah. I, I watched it because I started to like it. I started to love it, but then insert insert problem here, and all of a sudden, all the characters I liked start disappearing, and I'm like, I get it. It's a show that does that. But then when all the likable characters that I like disappear and I have to How trudge... How are you supposed to stay invested? Yeah, I got no investment. I mean, there were a couple that I could have went back for considering I think they made it to the end. But I, I just I couldn't well, trudge. And now here, let me let me explain my issue. I told you about this already. Yes. I was talking to a fan of the show. Yes. A big fan of the show who, for this final season, was up to date watching the episodes as they aired type of fan. And I had a full-on conversation with him about everything that's gone on in this last season. And then when the conversation was over, I told him, I've never seen a single episode. And he goes, wait, what? You were talking like you've seen everything. You watched all of it. I'm like, that's my issue with the show is it gets so fucking spoiled so instantly that I have to watch it live if I want to be able to watch it. And I, I can't watch shows live. I'm too busy. So I'd have to watch it another time. And it's just the fan base and the news because it's such a fucking big show and like with such high ratings and everything the news co- uh, companies want to cover it and talk about it that you cannot avoid a spoiler for this damn show it will happen i uh, i knew what I, happened with the throne whether you know x b c w y got it you know i knew all of that the night the episode aired and i didn't watch the episode i was lucky enough not to get that information so i mean if i wanted to revisit it i could i know who quote unquote survives so it kind of narrows it down yeah. but yeah I, i'm, I'm kind of right there beside you i kind of know who survived i, I could literally explain the last two episodes to you and i haven't seen them oh. that's how insane it is for me so i mean i i kind of when we're done and that's not this, the show's fault oh no it's the people's fault because yeah. they can't keep their i mean there should be a place you could go to to talk about this, like make a fucking private Discord server and just go hard. I feel like I just need to walk around with a fucking like motorcycle helmet on my head at all times just to avoid spoilers or anything. You well, you said to be fair, we did not run into any end game spoiler until we actually saw it. No, Ex- oh but- no. Except for the one thing, right? I had one thing spoiled for it, I think. But you went into it. No, no, I didn't have anything spoiled for it. Um, but that night when I got home, I started seeing the spoilers. That's and right. And it hadn't even been out for a week yet. Yeah. We were a couple days past the weekend. Yeah, it was uh, out Thursday. We got to see it on Tuesday. Yeah. 
So, and that night I got home and spoilers. Yeah. And it's things like, I can't even go on Pinterest without spoilers for fucking everything. I I will get Game of Thrones spoilers on Pinterest, and I don't fucking do anything with Game of Thrones on Pinterest, because I don't watch it. It just, it's there. Yeah. Which is not great, but it is what it is. Um, But even still, um, like, uh, on another Discord server I'm in, even though there is, you know, people that are like, hey, let's talk about it. There's a separate fucking channel, one for Endgame, one for Game of Thrones, mm-hmm. and then one for, uh, what the fuck's that other show that's about to end? Uh, Supernatural. He has one for each. And I'm like, that's how you do it. Well, it's like, I, I, uh... Because I, I get, there are some people who are like, oh, I want to talk about it. Either talk about it with someone who else who's seen it, or fucking shut up. The Star Wars mobile game we play, when Endgame came out, the first thing that they did was they put up a thing in the chat that was no spoilers. Do not say anything about Endgame. Remember, no spoiler. No spoiler. So, um, we'll move on. I know nothing of this. If you want to hit it real quick. <laughs> Fucking, you tell me, John. Okay, so... John. I mentioned this to you, and you thought something else. So... <laughs> to be fair, it's... Multi- I understand why. Okay. So, Disney did the Rescuer movie, and then they did Rescuers Down Under, and then eventually they did Chippendale Rescue Rangers. Yes. It's not Rescue Rangers, it's Rescuers. They're doing a live adapta- live action adaptation CGI hybrid of the Rescuers. And let me double check the name here. I have it right here. Uh, Akiva Scarf? Sc- no, Scaffer. Schaffer? Schaefer? Schaefer. Akiva Schaefer. Sorry for butchering your name. You can, you know, write me a strongly worded letter. Um, well, from He's from Lonely Island. Uh, we'll be directing the new live action hybrid rescuers disney movie and it's just i'm at this point now where i'm like i'm tired of the live action disney you're pushing it too hard you're you i'm gonna remain neutral just because they actually managed to manage to have christopher walken as big louie i want to be i want to be like you was a really good song so i'm gonna stay on the neutral side until both aladdin come out and then we'll see where I where I lean after that. But I mean, it's just we're getting a live action Lady in a Trap. It's a movie about dogs. Oh, we got I didn't know. I didn't li- know about that one. In quotations, live action Lion King. No, no, it's CGI. It's not live action. Yeah, I, that one I that one I will side with you on. But the live action Lady in a Trap. Uh, mm-hmm. yeah, they're doing that too. I I, I'm just I'm tired of it. Like at Disney, well, if, if action- you're out of ideas, admit that you're out of ideas. Move on. <laughs> like new IPs come out every day. Uh, fucking do another handshake with uh, imagination. Imagination got a lot of fucking creative creative teams for no fucking reason. I don't think they've ever done anything with Imagination. They own Pixar, remember that. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Oh. Which announced that after Toy Story 4, it's no more sequels. It's all original ideas. Good shit. So. I mean, 4 actually looks pretty okay. I still haven't seen 3. Oh, uh, 3? 3 got a little bit of a, oh, no. I was fine with one <laughs> like honestly one and one and two one and two i would say it would be the limit i but... saw two it was okay the, the best thing that came out of two was evil emperor zerg because then we got the uh buzz Lightyear cartoon yeah and that was a lot of fun so, uh, all right but yeah another live action disney thing uh you can go ahead and close that but while we're talking about disney um we've been so- slowly covering galaxy's edge as, a, as more details come and that's being the new star wars expansion to disneyland um and they are really trying to keep down on how many people are in that section of the park and really trying to keep down on lines and stuff like that. So there's this whole thing that for right now they're, they're doing reservations. There's a limited amount of time as, as to how much time you can be in the park, uh, that section of the park and everything. Now they're reopening Soren over California and California adventure to get people to flock back to that. to kind of break it up a little bit. And I get the concept but I did Soren over California a couple times while it was open, and I got bored, and I didn't even realize it closed at first. Like it had been closed for a while before I realized it was closed. Like when we when we went in oh, December, it was I know. But did you know it was closed? No. Let's see, like, and it probably it's been closed for a while now. So yeah. So having them reopen it is a. I mean, they they probably had the stuff. For I it. mean, I'm sure it'll it'll draw people. I'm sure, but I don't think it's going to draw the numbers they're expecting. They'd be better off. You know, doing doing, a, doing Star Wars over Space Mountain again, so that people have something Star Wars they can hit in two sections of the park. Yeah, rather than just running regular Space Mountain. Yeah, you know, increase the amount of Jedi shows you're doing over there as well, so that people are still getting their Star Wars fix over in Tomorrowland, 
and cutting down on how many people are fl- flocking to uh, Galaxy's Edge. So smart shit. Um, let's move on to this one. Um, you know a good amount about this one. Uh, I just kind of caught the news story really quick today. So. Okay, so Amazon makes Amazon doesn't really output any games. Sure, they'll have their exclusive sets, but for their warehouses, they are involving certain types of games to help their production team for both filling orders, processing orders, that sort of thing, by giving them a chance to uh, basically say, okay, I did my job correctly, you know, goodies, Mm -hmm. which is a a good thing. Um, It basically, you know, gives them badges. uh, It gives them, you know, uh, points so that way they can spend it on Amazon stuff. And I'm like, cute, cute. You get small hand clapping. You get virtual badges all that thing, and then apparently this is also to help out with those who are, lack of better words, having a hard time finding a job with their mental disorders, like autism or otherwise, because it helps engage them. It helps them stay stay affixed to Focused. their job. Yeah. So I'm like, if this actually helps out with their, you know, their, their men- mental state while working and actually being productive and you know making a living all power i i love amazon for doing this i like how the quote here that the washington post got um that ends with uh think tetris but with real boxes (laughs) is how the game works and i'm okay with that i think i would kick ass at it (laughs) i would also kick ass at it i i one of these days we got a 1v1 on uh tetris Tetris. wars yeah what what, what can we get tetris wars on now was that Uh, pc pc okay i'm sure we'll figure it out yeah um no i think this is great you know i i think this is both good and bad now here's the thing i think it's good because of all the good it does do for you know people with autism keeping people engaged but at the same time and stress but at the same time it's like i mean if you work at a place like amazon and you get used to this and then you move somewhere that doesn't have an amazon or something happens and you don't get to keep working at amazon or whatever the case is how are you going to handle going into a regular job? And that's a concern. That would be that would be a bit of a thing. Um, so, I, I I'm not saying that you know that's something that Amazon should be blamed for or anything because it's not. But yeah. it's just it's something to consider when considering something like this because you know people are going to try to flock to working at Amazon now when they hear I get to play games all day working for Amazon. People are going to flock. It's going to happen. Yeah, it, I mean, I'm, I'm sitting here going, we have a warehouse out here. I might as well. No, I mean, <laughs> I mean, I'm sure that. I mean, every workplace has its pluses and minuses. We both know that. Yeah. Retail is no different. Uh, warehouse, no different. It's just differences. You either deal with the general public or you deal with the general consensus of your own crew. And then you have, of course, lifting, management, that sort of thing. Mm. You know, um, organizational skills, uh, organization. That, that, just the simple shit. Yeah. So... I mean, if it cuts down on the drudgery of those tasks, fuck it. I'm okay with it. But other than no, that... I, like I said, I'm not angry at it by any means. I, no. I think it's a good idea. And I think we're getting a lot more workplaces that are trying to be clever with things and try to making the work environment a better thing. Because, I mean, the reason why we work five days a week, the reason why we have Saturdays and Sundays off is Sundays were originally due to religion. But the concept of the five-day work week actually came from Ford, who actually really isn't a good person but um had a few good ideas and he just he didn't do it because he cared about the employees he did it because he understood that taking time off would make you a better worker Hmm? um that and it meant it was two days he didn't have to pay you well yeah two days he didn't have to pay you and also allowed for sunday for church Mm -hmm. so you have one day of relax one day of uh religion for uh, principle and then your work week yeah and i was like that's a good idea but at the same time and now we've built the entire world around it. School is five days. Work is five days, you know? Yeah. Except my job. But <laughs> I don't... You. I think I took one day off this week, shit. I think. Well, yeah. and then you work this morning. Yeah. So, hmm. But, I mean, but then again, you also halfway play games during your work. Well, you know. <laughs> you just put something on auto while you're heading over to your next job. I, I listen then... to a lot of uh, audiobooks, actually, while I'm working on podcasts. Yeah. I've gotten back into Adam Cole's podcast again, so. Okay, good shit. Now, I got a few news stories to hit still. Yep, yep. So, 
Oh yeah, uh, I want to see the images. So if you could pull up for me, you are such the Air Jordans that they're doing for oh, Fortnite. Oh, Fortnite. I I haven't seen them yet. Um, so we've talked about our feelings on Fortnite, and but they keep doing collabs, and so things keep coming up, and so they're doing Air Jordans for Fortnite right now. Um, okay, why is that? Okay, okay, they they look pretty much like regular Air Jordans then. Yeah, those are just yeah, and they have all different types. Okay, those yeah, don't look they're, bad. They're, so are they good, actually good. making these? I believe so. Okay. Um, that's not them. That's I mean that's cool. I was expecting way more than it's just color schemes, really. Yeah, color schemes, and then they're gonna probably do another bump for them, and then this is their uh, Jordan character. Gotcha. Uh, well, one of them. I My think. assumption is that they're probably Pretty going different. to put like Fortnite on the heel or something. Or, like, yeah, on the on the sole. The sole. Yeah. yeah. Maybe. I mean, no, like I, where my Under Armour have the Under Armour logo or something. Yeah. Now I'm super, super keen on you know how these are gonna look because like I mean look at that, that looks That's really cool. Yeah. But if I, the that. problem is I feel like this is doctored, doctored a little bit because they almost look like they're glowing. You know. Yeah. Or maybe yeah. they will. Fuck it. You Light don't know. Shoes. Yeah. Fuck. I'm you. an adult. I want to be seen in the dark. No, I like I like that. Yeah. Those look nice. Not bad. Yeah. All right. So, um, and yeah. I'll move on from that. So, um, DC UO, uh, DC, uh, universe online. online. Yes. Um, now I, I've played the game plenty of times. Um, the issue, the game does have some issues that could be fixed to make it much more enjoyable, but I think it's an enjoyable game. It's an MMORPG on, you know, um, originally it was PC only and then it went to console and I think PlayStation was the only one where you could move your characters over and then PlayStation killed it. They, they didn't want it anymore. It's not available on PlayStation anymore. Um, well, now Switch is getting it. So it's free to play if you're into DC characters. And Siri just decided she's going to join the conversation. Siri, go away. <laughs> um, apparently, she's a DC UO a fan. Um, so, yeah, for anybody that's a fan of it, now you can play it, you're can you going to be able to play it on your Switch soon. So I guess give it a shot. I mean, it'll probably be another one where you have to start new characters again. You probably won't be able to move them over. So, But then again, it's uh, fairly easy to level up, I'm, I'm sure. Yes and no. It, it's you know you're gonna lose all that gear and stuff. You know you're not gonna carry your gear over. Um, let's see what else do I got here? Uh, PlayStation launched PlayStation Productions. Um, they are trying to make TV and film based off of video games. They basically have made an entire company for this now, and I find that a little weird because how many ill-fated video game movies and TV shows we have had. So I'm like, this is a big risk. And they're wanting to start with Twisted Metal. To which I've got to say, I only know so much of that quote-unquote story. Where Sweet Tooth, who was a uh, an ice cream truck driver, got wronged and then died and came back as you know actual Sweet Tooth. With the firehead and all that. See, I played Twisted Metal on my PlayStation. The original PlayStation. I do not remember a story at all. Yeah, no, I just remember cars uh, fucking cars, up other well, cars. Yeah, that that's pretty much the gist of it. You don't get too much unless you go into the like bios and who the fuck reads a bios in a fucking destruction derby bullshit? No, 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 that's dumb. You're dumb. But if they come up with a good story and premise, I'm for it. I say with a huge shrug. I mean, I I'm not against it. I am not against it by any way, shape, or form. I just hope that the, I just hope that the the whole concept of the story actually makes sense. Yeah, I also hope that they look right and they don't go. We're gonna redesign everything. No, 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 no. I want Sweet Tooth, Flaming Skull, and use all. the designs. Yeah, no, Axel. I want to be a man behind two giant fucking tires. So that time will tell. Um. But moving into other gaming, television, movie, news thing. News thing. The creator of John Wick is going to be writing the Just Cause movie. And I'm not entirely sure I want a Just Cause movie. Um, I mean, with... Rico Rodriguez doing his weird little flippy flu through insert other island here. I don't know. I don't fuck it. I don't know. Like, don't get me wrong. I like, you know, shoot 'em up, blow 'em up action movies, but I feel like this is just going to be literally a guy running around blowing shit up for an hour and a half, or they're going to try to get a lot of story, and then it's going to fall apart because of that. I don't know. So. Because you have, like, Rico Rodriguez, pretty fucking two-dimensional when, when you actually think about him. Because 
if I asked you, okay, what do you know about Rico Rodriguez from Just Cause 2 to 4? I only played one of the Just Cause games. I know, but so, what do you know? Okay, well, th- then give me what you know about him. Nothing, really. Like, he goes into these fucking dictator places and destroys everything to piss off the dictators. That's it. That's his one of two dimensions. The other one is that he used to be a stunt double turned uh, rebellion star. Okay. Okay, so he's not even like ex-military, he was a stunt double? I think he was a, either a stuntman or something of the sort turned turned into a rebel leader. Yeah, okay, so, I don't know. Yeah, I'm neutral. I, I mean, I'll, I, I would, of course, demand to see some more just because you gotta give me a fucking reason. Like, John Wick makes sense. Rico Rodriguez, I mean, kind of, you just gotta give me something. I need substance. With John Wick, it makes sense because, you know, you killed his dog and then all of a sudden he has to go in, kill you in a in a sacred place. Now you're ex-Phil. Now you have to fucking fight everybody. That oh. makes sense. So we haven't gone and seen John ah. Wick 3 yet, right? Yeah. We're, we're going to, but we yeah. haven't seen it yet. Yeah. You remember how it's a trilogy, it all ends here? Yeah, the fourth one was announced. They just announced the fourth one. I'm a little annoyed because I felt like I was for lied to. May 2021? Plus now it's like, well, you just announced it's number four, so now I know he doesn't die. Or if it's if the fourth one's gonna be about Halle Berry's character, I don't give a shit. I'm not gonna go see it. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> I'm sure I'm well. It's got to be about John because if it's not about John, I'm not gonna go see it. You're right. You're right. So, so I mean, maybe he survives, but he's missing an arm. A robo arm. <laughs> no, no robo arm. He has no arm. <laughs> uh, bionic fuck. man. Bion- okay, yeah, and fuck. then my last thing is we all know Telltale went out of business. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I GOG had to... has decided they are going to pull all the games um, on the 27th. That's fine. That's fine. They will be missed, but at the same time, I'm not shedding a tear. I mean, I own everything except the final chapter of The Walking Dead, which will continue to be available because it'll be available and... through uh, Skybound. And Game of Thrones. And then Game of Thrones, which I just don't care about. And yeah. I actually, I think I have the first episode because they gave the first episode to free to everyone. So, But that's on console. It's not even GOG, so it doesn't even matter anyways. Oh, you're right. Um, so, Ugh, I'm yeah, I'm just, I'm kind of glad though, because I'm kind of tired of just listening to all the bullshit about Telltale. Like, I'm glad that a company is like, we're, we're done, so we can all move on to something better. So, hopefully, something better. Hope, yeah, the oh concept was great. I'm hoping someone can pick up the concept without getting sued. Which, wait, which concept are we talking about? The choices and. All oh, that. oh yeah. Okay, I mean, I mean choices fu- are a thing. You have no idea. How agitated I was when I, of course, had The Wolf Among Us Part 1 finished up. And then all of a sudden, the the voice of Bigby said, yeah, we're coming back, 2018. And I'm like, oh, yes! And now here we are, yes! 2019, and we never got it. And we never saw anything. And I'm like, you sons of bitches. That, the Wolf Among Us is probably my favorite, if not my favorite benefacto choices matter even even if they really didn't now thinking about it i don't even care the story was just so good oh yeah no, it was a great story but that also comes from the fact that fables is an amazing comic book i haven't even read it i had the first volume you can borrow it i will borrow it um it takes place after wolf among us wolf really? among us is a prequel oh. but not like it doesn't like wolf among us ends you start fables there's still a gap there there's still a small okay cool i'm assuming a gap that was going to get filled in but never did but um, they ended up releasing Telltale Wolf Among Us comics a couple of years after it came out that show more like this is how the story would have actually have gone versus the choices that you may have made yourself. Okay. I mean, so, I'm okay with that. Which I have those two. They're in the closet. Oh, okay. So um, let's uh, move on to our topic. Uh, meme review. No, it is not meme review. Oh. Um, <laughs> our topic for today is um, hated characters in comic books. I would, you know, I would actually like to change this subject right now on okay. the fly. Uh, most overrated slash underrated. Okay. So that way we can have both sides of the spectrum, because we got a little what, a half hour to fill. Yeah. So roughly. I mean, let, let's let's fill up this time. Who do you think is overrated? Bam. Uh, Jean Grey slash Phoenix. Okay. Um, I don't right, like the character. I'm actually right there beside you. I don't care about the new movie coming out, and it's nothing against the actors. It's nothing against the director. It's nothing against the writers. My issues lie in the comics. Yeah. I never liked that the first three X-Men movies centered around her so much because I was like, I don't care about her. Why does everybody want this chick's nuts? Like, I, I don't fucking get it. I, yeah. 
She, it was, and the the fact that Wolverine in one scene, Wolverine was flirting with her in front of Scott, and I'm like, okay, I like their conflict, <laughs> but it doesn't showcase too much. And it's one of those moments where I'm like, damn, I wish these movies were gritty because like you know Scott shoot him in half of his laser beam. Just, Wolverine has to pull his legs back to him to fucking you know reconnect and then just go like, fucking ape shit on him. It could have been a bloody ass crazy scene. It could have been great, but lo and behold, we got fucking Gene, my glasses. Yeah, I and then know. she disappeared in the lake. In the second uh, one, water and then comes her. back, and then I don't know. She kind of levitated, let the water crash underneath her, and then just swam to shore. I don't fucking know, dude. And then all of a sudden, she goes back to her home, and then both Xavier and Magneto try and pick her up, and they were like, "Oh, don't worry, we'll figure that shit out." Uh, okay, and, and, and spoilers because. I mean, it's been out for a it's while, a but shit movie, spoilers though. for fucking the third one. So she just, you know, uses her mind powers to decide that Xavier is nothing anymore. Like, what the fuck was that? Like, yeah, like, okay, I will admit the manipulation aspect of her saying you were using me. Good angle could have been better explained. Yeah, I don't know. There were good parts about that movie. Uh, I was more invested in the whole Magneto oh, getting an army of like underground mutants because they were trying to cure, cure the mutants and all that. Like that was cool to me. Yeah. Um, uh, my... And then the cure thing, fucking oh, uh, Mystique getting hit with the cure. Like that was like, oh shit. And then him going, okay, you're gone from this movie now. Bye. Magneto get. I mean, fucking, you've got uh, Chelsea Grammer or Kelsey Grammer as a uh, beast. beast fucking amazing i don't think anyone else could play beast they've got a guy playing him now for the young ones he's not bad he's not I, bad i don't remember I don't, his name but i mean better than <laughs> yeah no kelsey grammar is fucking amazing um but uh yeah so that's one of my overrated ones one of my ones i don't like for marvel uh what do you got out other than her uh cap cap america really i i don't know i guess it's the marvel movies speaking to me mm-hmm. just because of most of the like winter soldier yeah perfect way to to really put it it doesn't really center around him so much it does of course bucky Mm -hmm. but every time captain's on screen he's like i need to go do this and he goes and does it and it's like okay why can't why couldn't some of this shit be in the shadows so when it comes to the comics i don't read cap but i'm not upset when he shows up in other people's comics yeah as or when phoenix or Jean shows up and just like, <laughs> uh, get out of here. You're just flipping through. You don't even care what she says. Um, but I mean, overall, Captain's not a bad character. He's not, he's not, I just feel like he's overdone in, in most of the scenes that he's done in the movies. So I feel a little, eh. when he died in fucking uh, Punisher versus the Marvel universe, he's one of the first to fucking go. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, mm. I, I, did, I, but when Spidey number three, out the door. I still don't like the way Spidey went out and the Deadpool kills everyone because that could have been an amazing thing. That could have been a good fight. Just killed it one panel. Yeah. Say, uh, Spidey got two pages. Well, Venom and Spidey got two pages. Hmm. And then Punisher. Why? What did we do? So, um, I, I don't mind Cap quite as much as you. Um, but looking, looking here, we got a few people up here. I'm okay with pretty much everyone we got on the page. Yeah, they're all... I would um, say there's a couple under... There's a couple under here. Yeah. Uh, so, my next one for Marvel is going to be uh, Spider-Woman. Uh, go ahead and pull her up so that I can get the regular name correct because there's been more than one. Uh, hold on. Actually, let's let's see something here. <laughs> Spider-Girl, Spider-Ham, Spider-Man, all of these Spider-Men. Okay, so there's three here. Uh, Jessica Drew, I think. Let's pull Let me up. double check before yep. I commit to this. Do, 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 do. Um, yes. I, ooh, is it? Scroll down. More. Okay, do me a favor. Type in Spider Woman Origins um, because I have the origin set for her. Okay. Hey, it's a six issue run Oops. that I bought mm, early 2000s, mid 2000s. Okay. There we go. So it is Jessica Drew. Yeah, Jessica Drew. Here we go. Um, I bought this whole six issue run. I have the six issue run. I fucking hate the six issue run. Oh, she is very unlike. Well, it, it, this is uh done by the brothers. Uh, what are the names? Let's scroll down. Hmm? Um, no. Uh, the origins. Are, it's done by the guys that did uh sword. Uh, 
girls, things like that for Image Comics. Um, they did the artwork for it. Um, but it's just... Oh, yeah. Uh, Jonathan Luna um, oh. and Joshua Luna. Okay. Uh, they're brothers. That They did the artwork for it. Um, Bendis wrote it. And it sucks. As I love Bendis. He, he does that Spider-Man run I was telling you about Ultimate Spider-Man. Oh. Um, Bendis is great. He created Miles Morales. But... The Spider Woman origin, getting to see who she was and everything, is just she's a very flippity floppity character. She's been good, she's been bad. She doesn't even actually start out with spider powers, yet she gets named Spider Woman because of a beam that hit a spider, then hit her mom's pregnant stomach. Um, her dad's working for Hydra, trying to replicate her by trying to make other girls like her, trying to make clones and stuff like that. And you're ending up with like all these different versions, like then big versions, small versions, stuff like that. And then you find out dad's fucking all of them. <laughs> the whole thing is just weird. <laughs> okay, I like these covers, by the way. Um, oh, this is silk. Silk. Yeah, silk's I, I, I just started browsing while you were <laughs> going on your tangent, and I was ha- like halfway listening until the very end. Uh, she's worked for Hydra. She's worked for Shield. She's worked for herself. I just, I don't like the character. And sadly, these comics aren't worth shit. So if I want to sell them. I would be lucky to get what I paid for them. Um, oh. I'm just done. I actually had that issue. Yeah, it's a um, cucumber. But I, yeah, anytime it's that Spider Woman, uh, okay. Charlotte, uh, what was her name? Jessica. No, Jessica. Yeah, sorry. Jessica Drew. Jessica Drew. Charlotte oh. uh, Witter's the other one. I like let's, Charlotte Witter. No, let's take a look at uh, Maddie Franklin. Maddie oh. Franklin's cool, too. Wait, it brought up the same. What the fuck? Yeah, you might want to pull them up separately out of this. I, I don't did. know if this is. No, I'm saying I don't know if oh. this is working right. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay, I thought I brought him up. So Charlotte Winter is this one where it is a part of the Avengers Invaders, Captain America, mostly the Captain America set, and then she appears in the Spider-Woman set. Um, Yeah, no, she's fine. You've got, you know, Spider-Girl. One of the Spider-Girls is his daughter. One of them's not. Um, uh, yeah, May, yeah Park. May Parker. Uh, uh, pull up May Parker, see if you can get the photos. Uh, that you next one over. No, nope, May Parker. Oh, oh, is it okay? Yeah, May Parker's cool. Um, he has another daughter at a different point. That's pretty cool. Um, and I even like uh, Anya, uh, Corazon. Corazon? Uh, I think it's Corazon. Um, yeah, here we go. Anya Corazon. Oh. So she she's a fun one too. I have her pop downstairs actually. Her pop figure. Yeah. Um. The the spiders, there's it's, a lot of different spiders. I enjoy most of them. the one in your display case, right? Yeah. Okay. The only one that I really don't like is that one spider woman. So, okay. uh, um, And I am a huge Spider-Ham fan. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, also known as Peter Porker. Peter Porker. And before uh, Into the Spider-Verse. In fact, the reason I went to see Into the Spider-Verse was more a piece of Spider-Ham than anything. Um, okay, your next one for Marvel, unless you don't have one. Uh, for Marvel, uh, that's over. I would have to say Peter Quill. Really? Mm-hmm. I mean, he got all of his publicity because of the movie. Before that, he was kind of unknown. Then I'll say the movies still. Cause, the movies, the yeah. movies kind of made him go over for you. Yeah, because I, for some odd reason, I I got the feeling that he just kept trying to blow up, blow up, blow up, and it kind of got annoying. But yeah. I think not to not to Pratt's benefit, like he played a good quill, but I think to the character's benefit, it was too much. Yeah. Especially you're in fucking space, dude. Who the fuck's gonna hear about you? I mean, that was one of his things. Though. He's like, he's trying to become famous in space because in, in in their version of space, space is a huge community, and gal- uh, this galaxy's got all these different planets and shit. But, but I guess I like heard that. of the Star Lord. Um, well, I mean, they make that joke, though, in, in Guardians. Who? Yeah. yeah. So. Oh, and Taser Face. Taser Face. That Taser Face was funny. Yeah. Um, I, Those are really my two go-tos that, that bug me um, in Marvel. Um, maybe if we're going into villain territory, I would say... I'd say maybe um, Green Goblin is a little overbloated. I I get that. I get that he's the one that pops up all the time when it comes to Spider-Man. And, yeah. I, and I do have to say that's partially because of the Raimi movie showing him, especially considering he wasn't the original villain. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I I enjoy the Goblin. Um, I, I feel like this man right here you're pulling up is the best of like all the Marvel. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. No, I just shit. wanted to see some covers. Uh, J. Jonah Jameson. Uh, 
Good old JJ. Good old JJ. Um, have you played any more of the PlayStation Spider-Man game yet? I played a little bit more. Uh, I haven't. Uh, I haven't plugged back in the PS4 in a in a minute because I was doing some some work. Okay. So I was like, eh, I'll play some Xbox, some some when, Vegas. When you start playing it, he does a podcast that within the game, and those like episodes... a long podcast, or is it like just a couple, uh, like a minute or two? Oh, okay, because um, I'm like, damn. But there's a lot of them that show. Uh, they, episodes keep coming up. You can go back and listen to them later if you like miss something or something like that. Mm. But they're fun. <laughs> it's just JJ losing his fucking mind. <laughs> like, and the voice actor, I don't know who did the voice acting part, but he's great as JJ. Um, and he just. There's a point where he thinks there might be be multiple Spider-Man, and he's like, "Oh God, I need to sit down." <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's great. Uh, let's see here. Um, uh, da, 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 da. you know, I, I I've heard people say Otto is a little over. Uh, so the voice actor for JJ in that game is Darren DePaul. Darren DePaul. So um, let's, he looks familiar. Probably. Uh, let's see. Uh, he was in Robots. <laughs> uh, he's in Final Fantasy 15. Yeah, it looks like he's done some acting for. We DC bear as bear. Well. We yeah. bear bears. I don't know. Looks like he's done a lot. He's done a lot. Cool. Good for him. I just wanted to see who who the actor was. Um. Oh, that makes me queasy. <laughs> uh, we just saw an advertisement for Aladdin. It um, was the it was a carpet writing scene, so it was like, ooh. <laughs> uh, um, I'm. I don't know. I saw the the trailer still of. Uh, what you calls it? He plays Reinhardt. That's why I knew him. <laughs> I was like, the guy looks so fucking familiar. But okay, I'm glad you did that. Uh, he plays Reinhardt in uh, Overwatch. Okay. Uh, stand behind me. Oh, he plays uh, Sin in Shazam. Still haven't seen it. Uh, I haven't either. But I did see the evil face dude, and he looks much different. And in... oh, that's not Sin. No. No, the, the bad oh. guy in the movie's not Sin. Um, oh. I'm trying to think of what you would know the bad guy from. But... Oh, right, oh. Uh, apparently he was in Crackdown 3. That sucks. Uh, I'm so sorry. But they don't know how the game's going to come out. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Command and Conquer, Rivals. Uh, Dark, uh, Dark Souls 3. Played a sloth. <laughs> uh, J. Jordan Anderson. But, um... No, I... For the most part, I feel like the Marvel comics are pretty solid. Those are the, the ones that bother me. So, if there's nothing else for Marvel, we can move over to DC. Yeah, uh, I mean, there's a couple underrated I would like to talk about in that, but I mean, if you want to do... Yeah, overrated... we can do, no, we can do underrated for Marvel. Okay. Um, let's hit the underrated first. Uh, underrated, I would say, still, You're to this say day... You're going Jigsaw, aren't you? Uh, no. Uh, I'm going <laughs> to say most of the villains of Punisher. Not, not... Well, it's, it's kind of hard to, you know, get publicity when you're in one issue. <laughs> I mean, there's a few. There's a few. There's Powerhouse... Um, okay two issues <laughs> five yeah a whole trade copy and then i would say if you wanted to do a pretty good <laughs> bless you Thank if you, you wanted to do a, a good movie uh the entire trade copy of girl in white dresses that you is my to read that one yeah that is probably my fucking favorite and having a whole entire just noir halfway into mexico uh desperado scene where he's like is that jigsaw is he still alive did they Having... do a noir punisher uh kind of with Warzone. no no, i mean like an actual noir because oh. they did spider-man noir i don't oh. know if they did a uh noir. they did they have it yeah click on p i want to see what punisher noir would be like uh i i it's just him wearing a uh, balaclava uh, was he uh, prowler uh, phil you have to uh, go down lower lower oh there uh, it is uh, uh oh no they don't have it what maybe it's not actually a thing then i know it is a thing i have like, a copy legit noir though like, yes it's called noir yes okay we will see he's googling yeah i have this issue i uh, know okay. this issue right here that's weird why is it not showing up in that list maybe it's noir punisher on there oh maybe they did it backwards oh yeah but, no be... that looks actually kind of good and i wasn't expecting it to look like that so uh, uh noir 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 no no weird Huh. Okay. Um, you know what? <clears throat> underrated for the movies right now because he has been kept from being in the movies twice is um, uh, Nova. You know what? Yeah. So we get the Nova I've... corpse in Guardians 2. Uh, and the Russos came out and said that they almost put, new, uh, put uh, Nova in Endgame but changed their minds. 
He was going to fly in. There, they had two ideas. One was that he was just going to show up to help. The other idea was going to be that uh, um, Snappy Bitch, uh, Thanos, was going to destroy the entire Nova Corps, and he was going to be the only survivor. Wow. I was like, that would have been fucking nuts. Okay. I would have been down for that. Yeah. All right, yeah, uh, Punisher Noir looks kind of interesting. Yeah. Oh, like... and uh, the fucking Marvel game that I pulled into. That's one of the cards. That's oh, another that's reason right. why I knew. Yeah, uh, a fu- uh, future fight, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I was like, yeah, I was fucking hype when I got this card. No, my biggest underrated, though, is got to be Moon Knight. Yeah, yeah. Moon he's, Knight he's does not get the respect he deserves. Like, if I... Okay, let me put it like this. I don't know any of Moon Knight's villains. Do you even know his name? No, yeah, because of how down. underrated he is. Yeah, let's pull him up. Oh, okay. Um... I want to see a Moon Knight TV show. Like, if we're going to do Moon Knight, it needs to be in TV show. Uh, it there he is. Uh, regular or Ultimate? Uh, regular. Regular? Yeah. Okay. I mean, Ultimate and House and M are fun, but regular. Yo! That's get, a good cover. That's a good cover. Yeah. Um, oh. I just realized, whatever this is, it isn't really giving us information. It's only giving us covers. Yeah, it's only giving us covers. Which... Um, but if you scroll down... Oh. Oh. That one right there... This is a decent run. The um, this is the uh, Lemire and Smallwood. Yeah, that was a that one's a good run. Uh, and then I, uh, <laughs> Quincy. Yeah, it looks like he's dealing with some Cthulhu ass shit. Quincy. Golden Gate Bridge or something. Yeah. Or maybe Brooklyn Bridge. Brooklyn. I can't quite tell. Yeah. Uh, let's. Oh, okay. Old Gods in Brooklyn. There you go. Yes. Came out uh, last year, September. So you should be able to find this still, no problem. Oh, I'm so excited. It probably hasn't hit trade yet, though. So, uh, um, Yeah, it's on Marvel Unlimited. Yeah, I don't have Marvel Unlimited. That's fine. I was considering I'll... doing it, but I have Comixology, so I'm just going to stick with that. Sometime soon, I'll have some credit cards paid off. Let's just head over to fucking uh, Maximum, and I'll just start up my own box. <laughs> just get lit with comics. Just, yeah, start getting ones with this kind of cover, because it is uh, Moon Knight 2016, number 199. Yeah, and... that... If you want to Google it, anyone um, who's like, "Oh, Moon Knight's a new character," he was made in '75. Yeah. Oh no, he's yeah, he is old as can be. You were telling me a bit about him, and I'm like, that would be a really good movie. And then I'm like, actually, second thought, I wanted to see more of that. I would actually like to see an entire fucking series. He's got such a cheesy name though. It's Mark Spector. Oh. So it's like ah. But then again, having ha- okay, Moon Knight's ability is that he mimics your abilities and does better, right? No. No, no, that's Taskmaster. Yeah, Taskmaster like watches and learns you. Okay. Then what does Moon Knight do? Gimme give gimme give gimme give what Moon Knight does. Is he just he's basically Batman. He's basically Batman. <laughs> but he's not mentally okay. <laughs> okay. So I mean um, the theory is that he is a mashup of three characters. Hit me. Um I've heard it as he's got a little bit of Spidey, he's got a little bit of Wolverine. And a lot of Batman. Um no, because uh, like the description I was hearing was Marvel, so they're oh. like um, I'm trying to remember who the third one was. I've heard Deadpool also, but I don't agree with Deadpool as much. I mean, I'm I'm super I'm super down. Um, here, let me if I can pull up his powers or not powers. He doesn't really have powers. No, abilities. his abilities. But um, I'm fucking stoked as fuck. So okay, he does actually have super superhuman powers. Uh, because he uh was visited by Egyptian moon god uh Cohen Cohen Shu. Kohenshu? K-H-O-N-S-H-U. Sure. Um, he's got strength, endurance, and reflexes that are all enhanced, depending upon the phases of the moon. Really? Yeah. That's super keen. Um, I wonder if New Moon just takes him away. I don't remember. Hmm. It's um, an interesting It's an interesting thing, because I, yeah, I, I would have never known. But now here's the other uh, thing. He's got multiple personalities. Yeah. That was what caused me to go. Yeah, he suffers from DID, so uh, dissociative identity disorder, um, the mental condition that causes people's minds to split into multiple personalities. Um, it's not uh, Moon Knight is not a separate persona, though. Um, he's not a separate voice in Mark's head or anything. Like he is, like Mark Spector is Moon Knight, and then when he's not Moon Knight, there's other things. Yeah. Um, I think there's one that, like one version where he's rich, and there's one version where he's a taxi cab driver. Huh. And, but he still has the feelings of... Yeah, he's still Moon Knight. Um, cool shit. 
you know, and it's, it's also very interesting because he's got all this stuff going on with the Egyptian gods and stuff like that. Um, the run that I was talking about that I'm reading, he's in a mental hospital being told, no, you've got DID. You think you're this hero that you're not and everything. Moon Knight's not real. And it just breaks him away. Yeah, it's this crazy and I'm, thing. I'm like, give me that. Give me that in, in, a, in a video form. Give me that. Um, but I, I will admit, uh, having, having known all of the Punisher villain, most of the Punisher villains and seeing what he combines with and all that, I'm super keen if they give him like an old wartime story Mm -hmm. back in, back in the days of the Vietnam war. Yeah. Like, I would like to see that just, just like a one-off, like an OVA, if they still do those for fucking, they do one-offs. Yeah, I would like they, to see they it. do one offs or they'll do like uh, six episode, uh, six issues type things, things like that. Yeah, but I mean, not not like no. Don't get me wrong. They did the platoon, which mm-hmm. is the one I'm looking at right here. I have, I think, number two, but it doesn't seem to give me enough relevancy because this is where he gets his first actual taste of blood, and it was uh, of a uh, a guy squatting behind a tree and he kills him in cold blood while he's shitting, and I'm like, eh. Could have been more drastic. Uh, I found Moon Knight's other two personality names. So, Stephen Grant and Jake Lockley. Those are good names. Yeah. Those um, are really good names. I think I'll I think I'll take Jake Lockley for something else. But Jake and Stephen never really get to be Moon Knight. No. It, they are just there. It's Mark. Mark is Moon Knight. Mark Zuckerberg. Uh, every now and then, you know, certain things happen and they become him. Yeah, um, I mean, the, there's a lot of things that are underrated in Marvel that would need I to be I have to say... The Fantastic Four is not underrated. Mm. Johnny is not underrated in the sense that, you know, everybody knows the Human Torch. They think he's cool and all that. They think he's flashy and showy, which he is all that. Yeah. But there is another side to Johnny that people don't realize if you don't read the comics. Plus, there's the fact that Johnny and Pete hang out. Yeah. You know, they're friends in the comics. And, and that's something does, and you doesn't, won't ever see. And doesn't Johnny name Pete the god godfather to his child? I don't think Johnny has kids. Oh. Reed has kids. Johnny has kids. I got something to show you, my dude. I haven't bought a Fantastic Four in so fucking long. It's fine. Uh, I actually think it's a part of the uh, Spider-Man run. Uh, the current Spider-Man run? No. Oh. No, it's a little bit ago. It looks it looks to be from a little bit ago. Um, spoilers for that run. I don't know which one it is. Um, it involves um, Peter taking uh, Johnny's son on a on a trip you know, flying around the city and uh, they have a heart to heart uh, where Johnny's Johnny Jr. is what I'm going to call him. I don't know his name. He goes, um, I, you want to know something? And Pete goes, yeah, what? Uh, I, I know I could have saved my father. And then Pete goes, yeah, I could have saved my uncle too. And then they have that little heart to heart. And he says, but something inside me, you know, told me not to, you know, not to stop that robber that day. And I'm looking. I am not finding the Human Torch kid. I will, I will bring it up later on because I, I, I think I liked the post on Facebook. It was of the 20 panels, so I'll bring that up later on. But uh, even if it, even if it's of an alternate, it was still a good, uh, a, a good read. Because um, I know Sue and Reed have a boy and a girl. Mm-hmm. Um, or maybe they're both. Maybe it was just of an uncle. Hard to say. I, I, it, it said dad. Franklin Richards. No, that's um, that's Reed's kid. I found it. Okay. Yeah. No, it's Reed's kid. So the uncle Johnny, not. So, okay. Dad. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. Uh. Then okay. Yeah, I was like, I don't remember him having kids. Like, <laughs> I was like so blown away. I was like, holy shit, Johnny had kids. But uh, yeah. Okay. But, um. You need to read just, Secret Invasion, and you need to read the Fantastic Four branch offs. Okay. Um, I have them. That'll be something we get you into. Sure, 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 sure. Um, While you guys are doing workouts, one day I'll just fucking snip a read. Yeah, you, know, you can always join us for the workouts. I, mm, <laughs> Quincy, my legs don't work like that. That's the point of the workouts. No. Let's move over to DC and then call us because I think we're pretty close on time. Uh, I think we're fine on time. Look at that. Look yeah, at that. We got seven minutes. We got seven <laughs> minutes, but that, but we're talking DC. Okay. Everything is overrated. Nothing is underrated. We're done. No. See. Okay. <laughs> okay. I feel like lately they've been getting characters that needed it to be recognized because of the w, uh, CW. 
Yeah, okay. And I'm okay with that. But now, like, Arrow's canceled and whatnot. Uh, but Stephen Arrow Mel was... came out and said he's willing to still show up in other things, even though the show's over. That's fine. So. I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't say anything is overbloated except for Batman. Superman, man. Superman is way overrated and way shoved down our throats. Hell, originally he didn't have a weakness. Kryptonite was made by the radio show. It wasn't even made by the comic book creators. Really? The guy that voiced Superman was sick. So they made a Kryptonite. So that way they could fuck with his voice a little bit? Yeah, they were like, oh, he's sick because of Kryptonite. He's losing his powers. He was the fucking kid on the fucking... Uh, a uh, playground that goes. I have all the powers. I have. I have all the powers that can beat your guys' powers, and I have all your guys' powers. Like, you know how many different versions of Vision he has? It's fucking insane. Yeah. No. I about Superman right. is my downer for that. Um, okay. Batman's mine just because he's also shoved down our throats. And... He definitely is. Um. But... Although he is impressive because he has no superpowers. Yeah. He's just a, a rich kid. Um, he's the one who says, I'll buy her powers. <laughs> I, I love Wonder Woman. My issues with Wonder Woman is I don't like man-hating Wonder Woman because then I just feel like I'm being berated by the comic book I'm reading. So whenever she's super angry towards men and very man-hating, I'm like... Well, that's, that's the yeah. Amazonian. Yeah, and she eventually gets past that. I like her more when she gets past oh, it. Oh, okay. When she's fresh, like, oh, fuck all of men, I'm like... I, don't like reading this because i feel like the the hero i'm reading is telling me to fuck off and die and i'm like well this ain't fun (laughs) yeah but i get that it's her character so i'm not mad about it that's just for me i read later wonder woman stuff yeah uh green lantern is pretty up there thanks to uh ryan reynolds are you kidding that movie was terrible and everyone hates it. that's what i'm saying he got overbloated for it and then he he even still references it to today i wouldn't say he got overbloated for it like everyone like fucking jumped down that movie's throat he got torn apart for it i know but he still references it as bad like he makes fun of it he makes fun of it but i'm just saying he's still he's still lording it saying yeah this fucking sucks um i'm a big even in fucking deadpool he did it i'm a big nightwing robin dick grayson fan like i dick grayson's my favorite robin um uh, having red hush i yeah fuck it i'll go alongside that too um now, I think you would like Red Hood, who used to be a Robin. Who turned to guns. Yeah, after, um, spoilers, being killed and brought back. <laughs> being fucked up! Um, let's push through these a little bit more. Let's oh, see yeah. what else there is. Um, uh, Zatanna, I want her to start showing up in things, because her and her father, uh, Zatara, I think. Um, let's find out. They're very interesting characters. Um... Yeah, she's Zatanna Zatara, so I do believe that is just Zatara. Giovanni. Giovanni, yeah, John Zatara, so he just goes by Zatara. Um, they're great characters. I would watch a Zatanna TV show. Um, yeah, I mean, it wasn't, yeah, hold on, she was in something, yeah. Well, it, that's spoilers for me, because I am not caught up. Oh, you, okay, then I'll back that yeah, up. back up. <laughs> but, I mean. Um, but, yeah. no, like, if she had a TV show, I would watch it. Oh, um, uh, yeah. I would say she's an underrated because she I, looks like fun. I think it was Paul Dini, but I could be wrong. Someone Paul was going to write... Uh, Paul Dini is the creator of Harley Quinn. Oh, right, right, right. Um, I did, okay, that name did sound familiar. big uh, worker for the Batman animated series. Yeah. Um, he, I think it was him, and maybe someone else, was going to write some Batman and was going to have Batman be in a relationship with Zatanna. Hmm. And they went, okay. And D, uh, the DC people came in and set down a binder that was a couple inches thick and then goes, here's everything you know about how magic works in the DC universe. Which is very impressive. And like, okay, cool. And like, now here's the thing. Um, you have to be very careful when writing Zatanna and Batman. Because Batman doesn't believe in magic, despite dealing with it. So, if Zatanna kills someone with magic for him, he could just be like, oh, I don't think they're dead because I don't believe in magic. And we can't have that. We can't have Batman killing people. Zatanna could send uh, Joker to hell for him. And he would be like, well, I don't believe in magic, so he's not in hell. I don't know what you're talking about, but he's in hell. So like, they're like, you have to avoid this. <laughs> they have a lot of rules okay. to keep the characters grounded where they're supposed to be. Yeah, okay. Well, oh, okay. Fuck it. Uh, and then an underrated one that we had mentioned, uh, we, had, we, had, we had looked at a list before that, Booster Gold. And you were like, yeah, I can see that because of, because of his character in general. He's a fun character. He's would he hold up in today's times? Yes. Okay. Oh, he's totally the guy that wants to be on all the reality shows. All of them? 
Yeah. No, if he gets if to be there's a, a camera of, there, he wants if it. If there's a camera there, he wants it. <laughs> As a guy eating bugs, I'm there. <laughs> um, I'll pull up, I'll have you pull up the Justice League cartoon episode for him here in a minute because that gives you a great representation. Oh my God, I just realized the most underrated character of all time in DC. Okay. It's the question. Oh, that's Downright, right. Downright, it's the okay. question. <laughs> Uh, we we had watched uh, a couple scenes with the question. Yeah, we watched his uh, Justice League Alt- Ultimate episodes. Uh, and I was like, uh, he was very quizzical <laughs> as, as he should. But when he was when he was having a conversation with who is the female counterpart to him? Uh, so he was having a bit of a back and forth with Black Canary. That's it. Um, he was having a bit of a back and forth with Supergirl, but the one that was like flirting with him was um, uh, Huntress. That's it. Yeah, and so uh, when he was dealing with uh, hacking, he was doing it and you know making the small tr- uh, chat while she was fighting, and he was just mm hmm mm hmm interesting interesting okay, yeah sure <laughs> mm hmm, and he just kept going. I'm like, I, so him calling Supergirl out on something at one point was amazing because yeah. he's like, you eat this or something like that. She goes, you go through my trash, and he goes, please, I go through everybody's trash. <laughs> yeah, it's like you're not special. Fuck off. He, and he has no powers. He has no powers, but he's crazy. Yeah. And I, I, I love crazy people. <laughs> like, I don't know. It seems like almost all of the DC characters is crazy in one way or another. Because you got Wally West, mm-hmm. who is friends with most of his fucking... Uh, You're thinking Barry Allen, but yeah. Barry Allen? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Who's friends with most of his fucking villains, because he's like... Eh, I, I understand you're fucking... sick. Yeah, it's like, uh, what's his name? Uh, that was voiced by Mark Hamill. Um, uh, the Joker? Trickster. Trickster? Joker? Trickster. Trickster. Something, something like that. Trickster. But even so, in, in one of the animated scenes, he, you know, <laughs> says he's, uh, he's about to get beat up by Apollo? Uh, no, it was... Oh, fuck, I don't remember the episode anymore. Uh, um, but even still, it was one of the big brawly dudes who picks him up, and he's like, uh-oh. And, uh, uh Barry? No. It was Barry, Barry, Matt. Uh, Barry goes, whoa, 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 let me I'll talk to him. And he sits down, and he says, talks you're in him. the suit again you're off your meds he's like oh and then all of a sudden he you know talks him into hey where is this going to be held and he's like oh it's an ambush at your at your meeting and he's like okay thank you and as he walks away uh batman goes are you gonna do something about him and uh barry goes hey when you finish your drink make sure you go back to the hospital he's like got, got me, me again, again flash <laughs> it's fucking great and it, it's mark hamill so it's like even better yeah what happened was they did the 90s tv show Mm-hmm. And he was always bringing up like gangsters and bikers and shit like that. He wasn't fighting anyone with superpowers or anything. And so they're like, shit, we need to get superpower people in here. And so they decided they were going to do the trickster and they brought in Hamill, who fucking killed it. Yeah. Cause and he, then he when did, he likes doing that they shit. did the cartoon, they had Hamill voice him. And spoilers to an episode I still haven't gotten to because we are slowly going through Flash and I am very upset at how slow we're going through Flash. He show, uh, The trickster shows up in the new Flash show and it's Mark Hamill. Yeah. And I'm just like, <gasps> This is amazing. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then they did a small snippet where the Joker and Trickster work together and kidnap Mark Hamill. <laughs> and Mark Hamill throws his voice around and That's great. Uh, a little bit of comedy ensues between that. It's a, a commercial for something. I haven't seen it. But even Let's still, it it's like it's like a one minute long commercial for something that aired, I think, during Super Bowl. Don't quote me on that. But uh, go check it out uh, if you can Google for it. But... Uh, I have a lot of things in my mind because I keep thinking about this shit. So uh, on my Twitter, you might see me making some weird comments about writing. <laughs> You're just going to randomly get fuck, you know, hot girl's ass. She's way overrated. <laughs> and were, everyone who <laughs> hasn't listened to this episode is going to be like, what? <laughs> the, biz- the bizarro world is underrated. Flatline. <laughs> I have a run for you I want you to read. Uh, do you know who, uh, yeah. oh, what is his name? Um <laughs> J- Jimmy. Jimmy. Um, the little plucky kid that uh is obsessed with Superman. Jimmy Olsen. Okay, he works at the Daily Planet. He's obsessed with Superman. Oh, uh, the for, the, the fucking uh, the one who actually uh likes Lois Lane but will never get to her. He's the camera kid. Yeah, I don't know if he necessarily likes those. I don't remember. Oh. Um, I don't read a lot of Superman. I don't either. Um there's a fun run I have though. It's like a six issue run, seven issue run. He has to go on a road trip with Bizarro. <laughs> <laughs> and so Bizarro, everything being backwards, keeps telling him he's his worst enemy, which means you're my best friend. <laughs> and things that it, it is nothing but absurdness, and they keep running into trouble. At one point, they're going through Gotham, and they run into uh, the Riddler, and um, Bizarro ends up scaring him away or whatever. But then later on, and Jimmy's like, I got this, and he goes to like, 
press the button on his watch and call Superman and realizes he doesn't have his watch. And it cuts back to the Riddler had stolen his watch. It is sitting there in his chair and presses the button. And then a few minutes later, it shows that the Superman is standing right behind him. It is a really fun run. It's like a little six issue dorky goof around thing. It's great. It's not to be taken serious at all. But basically, Jimmy's thought process is I have to do this road trip with him. I'm going to document it in a coffee that. table book. I want that. I want that a lot. Um, but that's all the time that we have. So, yeah, you'll see me talking about a book. Um, as you know, I love occult. Mm-hmm. I love the occult beings, those of, of ancient times. But I also like just the common denominator of did it really happen? And the, the parabellum of wait. Hang on. So you're the I... person that likes the movie where it was all in their head. Either all in their head or many people know of this action, but did it happen? And then when you begin to talk about it to the other person, they immediately change their mind. It's like you just were talking about it. What? Like a minute has mm-hmm. passed and it changes. Like it's not a matter of is it in their head. It's a matter of is it still going on? So... Sooner or later, I'll I'll probably have the first couple of chapters done. I already have a little bit. I kind of got sidetracked out last night and did other things because I'm a lazy sack of shit. But hopefully I can get some some pen on paper. Well, keys clicking, clacking. You know what I mean. Digitalness on digitalness. Digital keyboard. Clicky, clacky. But that's all we have. Ah! God, why? (laughs) Because I have no... Oh, God. (laughs) <laughs> that's all we got for you guys tonight um as he anyway, breaks the computer and I the keyboard fucking destroy it <laughs> uh let us know what you guys think follow us like us subscribe us uh email us um also if there's anyone out there that wants to do sponsor or ad space contact us um we we don't mind and we don't charge that much we <laughs> just like talking about shit just as long as we don't mind your product if it's something that I mean, I, I'm just gonna straight up say it. no neo Nazis. No neo Nazis. I'm not gonna fucking sponsor your shit. <laughs> uh, no, no companies that endorse uh, politics, that sort of thing. Yeah, we're not. Oh, this is a politic free, as much as we can keep it. As much as we can, if it involves a slight snippet of it, we'll try. Yeah, and that's keep why it on the we, we covered the loot box bill, but we're not gonna get too crazy with that. It's no. just it was directly around what we talked about. Yes. So, uh, thanks, guys. Uh,